on salvage hunters. Whoa, look at that place. Drew finds a honeypot location full of period antiques and classic cars, but is the owner his worst nightmare? I'm just frustrated. Not making a deal is, is just as good as making a deal sometimes. You know, it, it's the, the chase, you know, really. He gets a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to bid for some jet engine salvage. This is taking salvaging to a whole new level. But can he whittle down their prices? An older seat like this in this conditions, around about $5,000, is the, the going price for it. And there's an encounter with Britain's weirdest dad. Yeah, Your kids I... must be traumatised. But can he turn Drew into a superhero? You can try that one as well if you want, Drew. No, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the rubber suit to you. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> Woo! That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. Helped by his wife, Rebecca, yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk into gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your streets. Yeah. It's business as usual at Drew Pritchard's shop in North Wales, where eclectic antique finds reign supreme. Ah, now there's some wood I wanted you to use. The customers are flocking. The phone is constantly ringing. Good afternoon, Drew Pritchards. Well, it's been non-stop. There's been sales upon sales this week. And Drew's wife, Rebecca, is overseeing a very important delivery. By hook or by crook, Jesus will be with you on Saturday. So, we sold Jesus, and he's going to West Sussex. Let's load Jesus. Recently rescued from a convent school in Cheshire, Jesus is about to take up his new home in Sussex, where he's been bought by a collector of religious artefacts. But he seems reluctant to leave. He can walk on water, but he can't get over that. Jesus has left the building. For Drew, it's time to hit the road in his quest to discover the next salvage revelation. The shop looks a bit dead now, not having Jesus lying around here. Uh, so I've time for me to get back out on the road and see if I can hunt down some more stuff. Drew and Julian are on a five-hour journey south to a scrapyard in Devon. And, as usual, they're arguing with the sat-nav. Oh, no, you haven't. You haven't. What? What, 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 what? Go the right way. You're pointing us over the road, but there we go. No, no, this is it. The gentleman's name is Ralph. Yeah. And it's in an old house. Yes. With a yard all the way around it. Oh, well, that'll be good, because, I mean, I've been selling so much stuff, I really do need to find something architecturally interesting. But you don't know if there's anything here at all? We don't know for definite, no. There's nothing. We're going no. in blind. We are going in blind, unfortunately. God. Going in blind isn't an ideal situation for Drew. Whoa, look at that place. That was, uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, look at that. But he perks up when he gets his first glance of this stunning property, loaded with every treasure a salvager could dream of. I'll be very surprised if we don't find something here. When I drove down the driveway and you see the big old house and tons and tons of junk lying around everywhere, I just thought, this is great. I'm going to fill the van, I'm going to have to go and hire another one. It's got everything going. It's like you have a tick box of, right, big old house tick, big piles of old junk tick, dog tick, knackered old car tick. It's sort of got all of the things that I like. Um, so who knows? I hope so. Good. It feels good. feels right. Hi, Ralph. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Drew. How's it? Hello, Drew. Nice Hi, to how meet you. Doing? Hiya. Yeah. Julie. Julie. Hello. How are you, Ralph? OK. Yeah. Everything is for sale at, at the right price. We've got architectural salvage, motorcycles, cars, um, scrap metal, uh, furniture, everything. Where do we start? Where do, where, where do we go first? It's up to you. Start where you like. Whatever you like the look of. Here, should we do this yep. bit around yep. here? Should we have a look yep. through here? Yeah, that's it. This is our... Yeah. Um, this is our office and workshop and uh, where we run our business from. God, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. Has this been built on or is this the stables no, for the it, house it, or it's something? always been here. It's been adapted as a workshop, but it's always been here, 
you know, the building's 1830 and... Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm getting pulled towards that room. Can I have, just have a yeah. sift in there? Let, let's go there. Is there any old furniture from the original house here? I should imagine there isn't. That there... may be underneath. That, that, looks that like piece a, at the back. That looks like a dresser. Yeah. That's yeah. got, like, a kitchen cabinet-type plate rack. And... Yeah. And that was in the building? That was here, yeah. OK. What was this room? Was this the kitchen? This was the kitchen, yeah. Yeah. Can we get up that end? Yeah. You're a Debbie McGee, the assistant. Absolutely. He is. Better kiss her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Lift it. Hang on, hang on. Caught Jules, it's got underneath this chair, this table. That's a, on a, a snooker light as well, look. Was this on its original base? Yeah. Oh, I see. This piece is in a poor state, but a fully restored Victorian dresser can fetch around a thousand pounds. It's really original, this, but I just think the condition's just too far. It's not yeah. too far gone, but it's just beyond making any money on, I think. So, uh, so what would you want for this? I would really like a thousand pounds for it, but. Um... I'm really pushing the boat out if I'm offering him 200 quid. It's rotten. The bottoms have fallen out the drawers, the sides have fallen off it, the top's split. It's full of woodworm. Some of the drawer fronts are missing and half the handles are missing. But I really wanted it. Are you... Is it really £1,000? I'd like £1,000 for it, really? but you can always bid me how far apart It would be we? hugely insulting, so I'm probably no, not no, going okay. to. No, it's OK, I don't mind. It, you can insult me, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave that where it is. Yeah. It's a really nice thing, but there's a huge disparity between what I can give you for that and what you want for it. Yeah. Yeah. Furniture prices have dropped quite a bit, especially brown, old-fashioned furniture. There's only certain items that make, you know, a really good profit. Some of the stuff we've got to keep and maybe never get our money back for. It's Drew's worst nightmare. The room is loaded with exactly the type of period furniture he usually buys. But the roof has been leaking for several years and has wreaked havoc. Everything in that room is, for want of a better expression, knackered. All of it is just finished. The roof is leaking directly onto everything underneath. It's damp, it's open to the elements. Keep spotting things and going, oh, look at that, and then it's, there's half of it's missing and... Oh, Jesus. Just yeah. looking at marvelling at all these motorbikes you've got lying around everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're up there for security reasons as well. I like to look at them, you know. I like the little bits of glass stick into yeah. them. Yeah, very reflective. Yeah, little old cat size. LEDs. LEDs, yeah. <laughs> Early LEDs. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go into the house now and... Uh... Drew heads inside the main house. Getting inside country houses is a big deal. Off and off limits, this is where the good stuff is usually kept. Come on. Right, this is... Uh, Ooh, good. Um, yeah, this the is stuff... my home. So, there's stuff everywhere here. Yeah. Wallop, it's just bedlam. There's stuff piled up. The scaffolding in the hallway with stuff on top of that. There's piles of furniture. There was, you know, right right against the side of us, there was these two sort of Gothic altar rail sections. I don't know where he's got those from, but they're, they're, they're not that old. These pieces probably date from a church built in the early 20th century and could bring around £120 each. I'm going to get the ball around 100 quid. It's, yeah. not, it's really not worth any more to me, cos it's just a couple of bits. I just thought it might, you know, get the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, don't feel obliged, but... No, you know, no, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I would to... sell it... I'd really want, like, £100 per piece, per but, piece you know, or, or we may yeah. negotiate in the middle, but you can always think about yeah, it. Yeah, no. I've got, I've got to see a profit in it. That's, yeah, That's yeah. the thing, I've got, to, I've got to see some money in it. I don't really like to sell them, as you can probably tell by the prices, you know, they're, they're just lovely things, you know. What's this, then? A bollard. Fallen tree. Road closed. This would have been lit at night. What sort of money I, would you I'd see I'd want a thousand quid for it, you know, because it's, that is really old. The road closed, bollard didn't excite me, and then it excited me even less when I found out it was a thousand pounds. So, yeah, that was like, I was like... Most of the stuff I sell, I like to double my money at. I try and buy at bargain prices and sell it double, you know, 100% markup, you know. Oh, these are interesting. If fully restored, these Victorian hall chairs could sell for around £250 each. I do quite like them. What, what, what can you do them for? I, to be honest with you, I paid a lot of money for them, whether... Yeah, if they're in this condition. I, I paid about four or 500 quid for the three. Yeah. You're never going to get that back? No, I know. You're never yeah. going to get that money back? I would imagine that me and Drew are probably the same. You, you only buy something that you can basically double your money on, or maybe even more, or buy something because you like it to keep. So this is Georgian again. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? It's just a writing desk. Complete Georgian writing desk can sell for at least £500. 
but in its current state, this one is worth much less. Price again? Um, I don't know. You, you, you have to bid me. No, go on. I've done the last two or three and you've knocked me back. I, I'd like 500 quid. 500 quid. Yeah. OK. No, we'll Junior? leave that. Yeah, it is for me. Yeah. It is for me. Just because you leave something in a hallway for 50 years and it's rotten doesn't make it worth more money. If I can't buy anything in the next half an hour or find some common ground we can try and do some deals, we'll have to walk away, which is a hell of a shame because this is just a... I mean, look at the building. for it. It's just a honeypot full of stuff. There's so much stuff here. That is acres of stuff, but we need to have a little bit of a reality check on the prices. Unless things change, it could be time for Drew to cut his losses and leave. Parking meter. Parking meter. London parking meter. <laughs> no, not for me. A no money meter. left on it. No, no. Expired. They've not quite fallen all apart yet. After an hour of looking around, Drew's original excitement has completely evaporated. I'm just frustrated. Um, uh, coming here to deal with Ralph. Uh, he's a, you know, he's a nice enough guy, but as soon as we got down to, to money side of things, just like, whoa, we're, we're just living on diff two different worlds. Um, the condition of the stuff is at best appalling. Um, it's just knackered. Owner Ralph has an unusual philosophy when it comes to selling. Not making the deal is, is just as good as making a deal sometimes. You know, it, it's the, the chase, you know, really. Drew needs a strategy. Plan of attack today is to find something Ralph is not so attached to and get him back down to, you know, back down to earth, really, on his prices. We've got lots of signs here. Looking at it, I would say it's... 40s to 60s, huge time period it's in there, but... Um, yeah, it, it, it it's is a very, it's a very really, early. Yeah. It's a difficult one. You reckon it's earlier than that, sort yeah. of traction? Yeah, it could be from 1908, couldn't it even? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Founded in 1919, Citroen was known for its clever advertising, and early examples like this can sell for as much as £250. What I'm saying is, is the gauge of the steel and yeah. everything, it's, still, it's yeah. pretty, um, pretty basic. Yeah. Very, very thin. It's real, anyway. But it's real and I like it, yeah. so it's a good decorative thing. Yeah. I like Citroen, so I've had a few two CVs and just something... It just looked so simple, great colour, good size, great condition and looked period as well. It's got a bit of age to it. So what sort of, um, what sort of price is that, then? I would really want 100 quid for it. Genuine French. There's a little bit of damage to the bottom. Could we do £75 for that one? Yeah, just, just this once I'll do it, but it's worth more with the damage, really, but 75 quid. <laughs> OK. Sometimes patience is the key, and it takes a bit of time to build up a rapport with somebody. I like it. Yeah. So it's a good decorative thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, lovely. OK, we'll have that. Drew's strategy seems to be paying off. Now the ball is rolling, he's beginning to think he may be able to do some deals with Ralph after all. He's off outside, where the treasures are literally buried. As we've got all sorts in here again, haven't we? So this jack, what's, what's that in there? That's, that's a Mark II jack. Mark II jack? Yeah. The, the other one, the other side is a, a, a Mark, Mark IX. IX. Yeah, OK. You're really discovering them, aren't you? Can't even see. There's three motorbikes down here. There's a, a BS, two BSAs and one in the middle here. I'm just trying to identify. Yeah, because I'm not sure what's there myself. I'm just trying to identify. Hang on, is it a Triumph? Is that a Thunderbird? I hope it is. <clears throat> Almost impossible to tell now the condition's gone so bad. Seeing all these beautiful cars and, and everything just lying around is starting to really sort of... I have to be honest, it's ticking me off a bit. To be very British about it, but it just is. Drew hates to leave anywhere empty-handed and carries on the search. Oh, yeah. Aha! Eventually, he spots something he knows he can sell and that he definitely wants. That's nice. You know, it's not terrible, is it? It's not in great, Nick. See what he wants for it. But first, he has to deal with Ralph and those prices. We found a um, sign up in the back there. Yeah. As well, so I just want to discuss that with you. But uh, I love the motorbike. Yeah. That's fantastic. I like that a lot. The sign, it's nice. What, yeah. do, you, what do you want for it? It's a, li it's, it's a good one, but it's got a lot of damage. Yeah. Appealing to car enthusiasts, collectors, designers, film and TV prop buyers, Drew knows he can easily sell a sign like this for around £450. Um, 
I really want 200 quid for it, but you know, it is a big one, so it's a, yeah. you know, hard to buy and hard to sell, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but it's a nice, the Union Jack's always going to be yeah, good on it. Yeah. OK, all right, yeah, we'll have it. Yeah. Drew's surprised that they've reached a price he can work with, but not as surprised as Ralph. In a way, I was surprised he bought it, you know, um, Probably I'm learning about the price as well now, because if he, if he can pay 200 and make a profit, you know, it's, it's got to be good. We, we've done very well on that one in the past, more than doubled our money on it again, so that should hopefully, hopefully, we should get close to that again. We've had a good day, and it's nice to see somebody from a different part of the world, you know, Welsh people, or, you know, a, a, almost a different world, different country, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. Stick it on. Come on. Great stuff. Right, nice to meet you. Take care. So how do you think that went? Didn't get enough. No, but two signs ain't going to pay the bills. No. To be honest. It just wasn't happening today. It didn't happen today. This ten-hour road trip has reaped little reward. Drew and Julian arrive back at base, and they're not looking forward to explaining an empty van to the waiting team. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. On shore. How's everything going? Oh, yeah, great. No, Sold no. anything? What do you no. mean, no? <laughs> Sunbathing and reading the paper. Well, yeah, no change there. Nothing there. That's no, rubbish, isn't it? Nothing was going cheap, but I got this off him, and uh, £200, I'm confident we're going to double our money on that. If you can just set to and polish that, please, Gavin. And from the same guy's scrapyard, we got this, which I, I, I love this. Ah. How cool's that? Citroen. Citroen enamel sign. Yeah. Lasts longer than the cars. Yep. <laughs> 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 right. Come on, don't milk it. Get on with it. Why don't you shot off and stop stick the It's not fine it. restoration. Throw a bucket of water over it. Come on. It looks loads better to me. It looks funky and, and it feels French. And again, it just goes in with that very, very strange mix that we do. When he comes back with an empty van, it's really sad to see. And you can see his face a mile off, the disappointment uh, of all the effort that he's gone into. But the only thing we can do is um, turn him around, pack him off in the van again, and hopefully he'll find some more treasures. The next day, Julian and Drew follow up on a lead Rebecca has lined up for them. It's a rare opportunity to visit one of Europe's largest aircraft salvage yards. It's a four-hour journey south to Gloucester. And with Drew already coming up short from yesterday's buying fiasco in Devon, the heat is on to find something worth bragging about. So today we're in Gloucestershire to see a company called Air Salvage. Cool name or what? Planes? Yeah. Oh, right. Like it says on the tin, air oh, salvage. It's so it's bits of things that have been in the air that are then salvaged. So these guys, right, they take old planes apart. Apparently, people fly, can still fly a plane in and then they take it to pieces carefully, properly, yeah. and sell the individual pieces off. It's really exciting. What, what could we find? God knows what. Folks who don't want me to fly anything, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> don't like flying. All right. Yeah. I do fly, but it's just massive amounts of drugs and gin. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with massive amounts of drugs and gin. Yeah. Two Valium and a gin and tonic, and I'll fly anywhere. <laughs> Five. That's huge. So we need our high vis today. Bradley? How are you doing? Drew. Drew. How are you doing? Hi, Julie. Jules. I'm Bradley Gregory, and we dismantle aircraft. We remove the, the aircraft parts for, to go into the second-hand market. Not just anybody can come in. It's, it's usually invitation. We've got a lot of returning customers. A lot of the stuff is cut to order, so it's, it's quite unique. Wow. We, we just store aircraft in this one. People just pay us to store them in, in the hangar. So is that a private plane? That's somebody's toy? Yeah, it's someone's private toy. Really? Wow. <laughs> well, that's pretty impressive, isn't yeah. it? What I'm looking for here is something real oddball, something you're not going to expect. And it's taking something that is obviously from a plane 
and then being able to use it in uh, a commercial or domestic setting. So something that you think, God, that's off a plane, but doesn't it look cool? So maybe like a door handle or a ceiling lamp or a chair or a piece of bodywork. Right then, guys, this is where the, the aircraft reach the final stage of their life. Blimey. That's a cool piece. Say, so how much to cut something like that off? About 350 pounds. 350 pounds for a whole wing of a... For, for two metres from the end. It's not bad, is it? You can make one of those desks, you make a desk out of it. You know, just, a, just mounting it on a wall. Just yeah. a piece of art, it's brilliant. Really beautiful sort of sculptural really shapes, cool. all the pieces for, of these. It makes you want to buy a piece. There are incredible pieces everywhere, but Drew's keeping his ambitions firmly on the ground. I like the wheels as well. Um, I think it's normally about 100 pounds. 100 quid for a wheel? Yeah. While I'm tempted to buy a great big piece of a jumbo jet, I have to be mindful of what happens here is then I have to get that cut up, I have to get it worked on, it's going to cost me money. Um, that's no good. I need to find something that I can convert easily. So, something I've got a ready market for, chairs, lamps, something decorative. I've got people for that, I can sell it quickly. Wow. Can we go up there? What's, is that into the cockpit? No? That, yeah, that is into the cockpit. I don't know how stable it is. Yeah, it'll be OK. Wow. So where do we go? Wow, this is amazing. It's weird, because you imagine these things are going to get scrapped, but you don't really think about it. No. Walking through the sort of bare bones of the plane, it's like walking inside some sort of huge fish or a whale. You know, you can see the ribs of the plane. Uh, it's amazing, really. Though amazed by the engineering, this stripped-back cabin also gives Drew some justification for his fear of flying. That's the outer skin. Yeah. That's not the outside so of the really plane. Nothing. Yeah, that's Is the that outside it? of the plane. I didn't sound very really thick, mate. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's probably only a two, two to three mil thick. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's the outside. It's me not flying again. <laughs> you don't fly anyway. No, that's true. <laughs> so this is what a this is what a dead aircraft looks like. This is this is it. Now this is the end of it. It's like this is finished. Yeah. You're going to cut this one up. This one's going to be cut up. So we're going to cut the front section from this to make a, a training program. So what, like a flight simulator. A flight simulator. It does have a very strange feeling wandering around inside a jumbo jet that's in bits. You never you never want to be in that situation, do you really? Um, so seeing it uh, taken apart, disassembled is very strange. You know, you're wandering around, it's slightly eerie. Is, is this all sold? He sold all this gear? All of the cabin interior on this is sold. This is taking Very salvaging niche. to a whole new level. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, let's take another look in the cockpit. And even though this plane is not going anywhere, the 40-year-old salvage hunter reverts to a nine-year-old boy and asks to go up front. It's really cool, isn't it? Where, yes, he pretends to fly the plane. But this is Drew Pritchard. And even whilst having fun, he spots some potential salvage. What seats are these? These are the cockpit seats. Exactly what I've been looking for. So it's a great big pair of pilot seats, co-pilot seats. Leather, huge, armrests, very funky base, loads of rivets, odd size, odd construction, strange looking. Got it all. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So what would, what would something like this cost me today to buy uh, in that condition? An older seat like this in this condition's around about $5,000 is the, the going price for it. Really? Um, it How many do you want? $5,000. <laughs> I don't want it that much. <laughs> Let's be careful when we we'll put it back we'll put it back down gently. Very yeah. carefully. <laughs> Thanks, Bradley. <laughs> you know, £5,000, I'm sure, uh, uh, if I needed to buy a plane seat for my... Boeing 747, that's what they're going to cost. But I only want them for sort of decoration in somebody's house or flat or bar. OK, I'll, how can I, yeah, I do want one of those. <laughs> for Another about day. 250 quid. Another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's clear that Bradley's customers expect to pay more than salvage hunter prices. And reluctantly, Drew deplanes in search of something more affordable. We've got over 15,000 items on our books in this hangar. He's conscious that the team back home will be very unhappy if he doesn't buy anything. And he's pinning all his hopes on this final hangar. It's gonna, it's, there's so much here to take in. These rocker switches, like those, lights off a fighter plane sort of thing, aren't they? Oh, it's, it is, it says arm. Everything is just so good looking. They're quite cool, aren't they? What do you think of these, Jules? Look at that. This is the cockpit door from a 737. How much are they? Uh, they're two fifty each. Two fifty each. Just thinking, as a pair of double doors. 
How much am I going to get with one of those? It's 400, 450 pounds, maybe. 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 It's not reversible, that's the problem. Because you've got the cutouts here. You've got that last piece think, sticking out. I was just thinking... That and that will swap. But, but it's a, look at the work <laughs> doing it. That's huge, massive. Huge amount of work. Altering them, going to take hundreds of man hours to take it apart, alter it, mess about with it, and then get a return. All the latches are on the right. And to take one of the hinges off, that's like it's going to take me a week. So just too much work. I'm just, I just lose money like a dripping tap if I bought those. What I'd like to find is something that is obviously from a plane, but it's got a secondary use, so it can be used in a house, restaurant, mm -hmm. hotel, bar, shop mm -hmm. fit, something like that. So that's, that's very close, isn't it? I got really excited then. I thought, God, we found something super. Do you have um, seats? I thought, well, they're going to be good for bars, restaurants, home cinemas, something like that. And they're very stylish as well. What are they out of? Obviously. These are a 737, a Russian 737. A Russian 737. If so that commercial. makes all the difference. <laughs> 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 I'm not flying in a Russian plane again. <laughs> <laughs> no, there you go. Oh, that's oh, nice. <laughs> How much is this one? This is 250. 250 quid. That's not bad, is it? It's not terrible. Not terrible. It's not like that, but slightly more stylish. They're sort of not quite there, you know? They're not quite right, they're just not funky enough, very comfortable. This stuff just doesn't have that edge to it. They look a little bit mundane, a little bit workaday. Because I'm looking for something that, you know, is not really their stocking trade. I'm looking for something very, very stylish, odd, weird, funky, you know, I can do something else with, and uh, they're in the spares market. So it, it's two different worlds trying to sort of make sense of each other. What about bits and pieces like this? Hostess trolleys. Now, I'm going to pass on those. These are from light aircraft. No, it's still not working for me. You? No, not at all. No. Cool. Nearly there. Nearly there. These are interesting, Bradley. I like the look of them. These are the, the galley trays. These go... So oh, these... In, inside there. They go into the, the actual galley units. How much are these? Uh, they're 25 each. 25 quid each. But we don't have many, because they're quite popular. These insulated food boxes are exactly the type of thing Drew's designer and shop-fitting customers will like. They could easily sell for around £40 each, and they've certainly got Drew's creative juices flowing. My thinking is, you know, these things are great shop-fits. And, you know, in your bathroom, you know, have, have just a stack of them, you know, just pile them all up to the ceiling, very simple to fit together, very easy to attach to a wall. Great, so they were, they were like a great find. I was hoping there was going to be lots of them. Is this all you've got? That's all we've got, just there, three. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. But they're really funky locks, aren't they? I think they're cool things. Um, if I took... Can I, have, can I have three for 60 quid? £20 a piece? They're quite popular. Well, these aren't that popular, you've still got these left. Those ones are. Oh, I, right, I, okay. I, I can take them away tonight. So, what, is that a no, then? It'd have to be 25 each. Has to be 25. All in yeah. for three. I think Bradley is very, very governed on his prices. The prices are the prices. I don't think if you're buying the wing off a of Boeing, they're going to haggle too much. So, that's off today. Yeah. Got yeah, yeah. Fine, we'll take them. Okay. Yeah, no, for sure, we'll take those. I bought three little things. Um, but you never know, he might phone me up and say, look, I've got another jet in, it's got 50 of these things in, do you want them? It was worth going there for that, for sure. A good contact, and I saw those beautiful old planes. Thanks very much for coming. No, look, thanks. Really appreciate it. Nice to see you. It's been good. Thank we'll you. See you again, hopefully. If you get any more of those boxes or any of the seats we discussed, just send me some emails. Let you know straight away. Great stuff. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Happy? Over the moon, Brit. Because I'm with you. And you're my hero. <laughs> Back in the van, Drew and Julian realise that three small boxes is not going to cut it back in Wales. Yeah, but I tell you what, we're going to get grief when we get back to the shop. <laughs> what have you bought? Rebecca's going to kill you. Oh, really tough week, um, really little reward. It'll discourage Drew for a short period of time, but he will bounce back. He'll come back from it, but he's going to be a bit down tonight, I think. And I'm going to be drunk. <laughs>
So they put off the day of reckoning, and rather than head back to the shop, they spend another day on the road, investigating a new lead in East Sussex. I'm afraid you missed out on the Peronis last night. Really? It was a Peroni night last night. Oh, my good God. I got into my bed, and it was like literally sitting in a marshmallow. So I, I could, you, you can't move. It's been a tough week for us so far this week. Uh, we've travelled several hundred miles and we've only picked up a few piddly little things, but uh, Mark has just rang me and he's come up with a really good lead. It sounds like he's got some exceptional stuff, so we're going to go straight round. They're off to battle in East Sussex to see Jeremy Trinder, a collector and budding inventor who has contacted Drew because he needs a clear-out. My family's always collected things, so I've been brought up with it, so it's, you know, it's uh, just carried on from there, really. It just seems a natural thing to do. He's got, and I'm not joking, a Batman suit he made himself for himself. Oh. The kind of stuff that I'm drawn to and, and enjoy are kind of one-off pieces which are slightly unique, slightly off the wall, a bit, uh, a bit out there. He collects all manner of stuff. There's no real rhyme or reason to what he collects. A weird mix of stuff. But he might have something. This must be it. That's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Jeremy. Hi, oh, Drew. Drew. Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? All right. Very well, thank you. Yeah. Hello, mate. This is James, my son. Hello, James. Hi, James. We've got a lot of stuff, and it's it's just time to get rid of some now and make make some space. Otherwise, we're going to end up like sort of hoarders, and that can't happen. So you've got a lot of stuff lying around. We might as well start here if you like. Yeah, sure. Have a have a look. Have a look. Oh my God! Look at that. We weren't expecting that, were you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he's built a time machine in his shed. Don't really need to say any more. He built a time machine in his shed. So is it a copy of the one off the time, yeah, off the time machine? Yes, it is, yeah, the HG, HG Wells one. Does it work? We haven't wow. tested it out yet. We haven't tested it out yet. Yeah, okay. we've got to uh, okay. do a bit more wiring and then... All right, uh, OK. Where so are we going to go first? This is properly mad. It really is. What it's... possessed you to make this, then? We... Uh, I remembered a film from when I was a kid, and... Uh, I said those fatal words. I think we could build that. <laughs> what a top dad. He's built a time machine for his little boy in his shed. I make a lot of the stuff. I suppose some of it's nostalgia from my point of view. And it's just great for him, because he's out there with me and he's building stuff and getting involved in it all, and it's better than him sitting in front of the television. Well, fantastic. Well, clearly, you're a man after my own heart, so I'd like to have a look around what you've got for sale and just oh. have, a, have a poke about. But that's really... You can't really top that, can you? I don't know. You're gonna have to try hard. Yeah. Anything in the boxes I need to know about? I don't no, want to go no, opening all the boxes. Uh, to be honest, probably the only thing, unless you want a mummified cat, the only other thing in here is probably Ooh, is this safe. A that mummified you might like. cat? Oh my good God. Good grief. It is, it's like a little satanic, devilly looking thing. Look at his teeth. I've had that since I was 12. My auntie gave me that. It's great. I like that. Unbelievably, there is a market for mummified cats. In medieval times, it was considered good luck to seal a live cat in the walls of new homes. They are sometimes uncovered during restorations and can sell for up to £2,000. Like You're not going to get it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> but Drew decides against the cat and goes from something macabre to something gothic. What's that there? Uh, they're Lights. Uh, light cages, yeah. Are these for sale, Jeremy? Yeah, they can be. They yeah. could be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're very well made. I don't think they're very old. They're probably only 20 or 30 years old, if that. They're a great decorative pair of wall-mounted torches. Put a big pair of candles in there. They're just a cool-looking thing. Put your candles in, stick them outside. Look oh, cool. pretty. Late 20th century decorative wall torches like these are popular with props companies and interior designers and could sell for almost £300 the pair. I think £60 is about right. That sounds fair. I think it? if they were older, they'd be worth an awful lot more... Yeah, well, yeah. they would be worth yeah. an awful lot more money, but they're, they're not. Um, but they've got something about them. They've got a sort of Gaudi-esque bit to the top there. And... Yeah, so 60 that's for good. the pair. That's, that's fair enough. Is that all right? That's good. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah. OK, great stuff. So you got some stained glass windows? Oh, or yeah, leaded put, windows? Had those rather. Well, we were going to put them in our new extension, but we opted for something else in the end. They're quite pretty, aren't they? I like these because they're in a cast-iron frame. Second half of the 19th century, those are going to be. But these are something you'd, you'd, you'd want to get rid of? Yeah, for sure, yeah, because, I mean, I'd have to build a summer house now just to put those in. <laughs> <laughs> Once restored, Victorian stained-glass windows like these can fetch around £220 for a pair. What do you want to do for these? 
60 quid. For the pair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, OK, right. we'll have those again. They've got that sort of uh, lancet effect to the top there. They're very pretty. They've both got moulded glass roundels. We have give them a polish. They'll look a million dollars. OK, lead on. More sheds. OK, shed round the corner here. OK, looks good already. So what have you got in there? Oh, my good God. Yeah, Your I, kids I... must be traumatised. He's been brought up on it, so he's quite used to it, but... Uh... And you're married? Yes. Yeah. Funny, <laughs> <isn't it>? <laughs> <laughs> he's the classic British... Um, eccentric, and there's just not enough of them around. There's a lot here, actually, isn't there? There's another metal sign up here, but I don't think that's French. I quite like it, though. It's, it's a nice little decorated thing for a restaurant or something like that. Enamel signs are something Drew can always sell. There are many fakes around, but assuming this one's genuine, it should fetch around £120. 20 quid. That's more than fair. Just a good little decorated thing. For a pub, restaurant, that type of thing, that's probably where it's going to end up. Some more of this fairground stuff up here. So what do you reckon? Is that the same again? Same sort of price? Yeah, around. Yeah, I think yeah, they're 20 quid. We, we, we take it for that. So what's this, then? That was for a Halloween party that we had, and basically there was a light, in, there's a light that goes inside it, a brain, that, a plastic <laughs> brain, that goes inside the jar full of water and then a pond pump which bubbles, so it lights up green and the water bubbles away, so it's part of a Frankenstein prop display that we did. <laughs> It's a teaching aid one, aren't they, these? They're, they, again, were for the Halloween thing. You really no, you're into this Halloween I just, thing, I just, I just you? wanted a couple yeah. of skeletons, really. It's yeah, great. of course you do. Yeah, I'm quite into the Halloween thing, cos I like that aspect of the unexpected for people. You know, they come here and they'd be, like, slightly like, ooh, like that, but then they yeah, that's, that's good. Green Goblin. Green Goblin helmet. What, for, for people? Yeah, care, the padding's not in there, so be careful. Oh, and actually, if I press this button... It hurts, you, actually. Uh, Oh my good God, Michael. <laughs> Sorry, it was a. <laughs> You're really out there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the only other thing was that you've got you've got this fruit picker ladder behind you. Yeah, I've got another one just up there, it's a bit shorter. Agricultural antiques like these fruit pickers ladders are very rare. After restoration, Drew could sell these for around £220. OK, so what do you, what do you want to do? do? Are they for sale? They, they, Something they can you'd be sell? for sale, yeah. Uh, 20 quid each. Oh, yeah, that's fine. They're good decorative pieces, aren't they? So I'm really glad I called in. I didn't think we'd get anything. And uh, he's got loads of stuff in the house he wants to show me now as well, so I want to get in there. Not only are the prices great, but Jeremy's taste coincides perfectly with Drew's. What a great-looking place. Thank you. They're ahead of the game in so many respects with what they're doing, whether they realise it or not. Their whole look and their combination of their antiques put together in modern settings, in modern ways, it's brilliant. Really, just... And it's natural. They've just done it because that's what they like. To see one that's just evolved like that, cos he just likes 1950s-inspired sci-fi, and he likes skeletons, and he likes antlers, and he likes period-old furniture. This chair, is this something you'd sell? Yeah, no, that's something we'd get rid of. We've had it probably 12 years. It's just a great shape. The, is it a club chair, club isn't chair, it? Club chair, yeah. Ow, over your knee. OK. It's had a lot done to it. Half the frame's new. With something like that, I just can't help myself. As soon as I've seen it, I'm like, well, I know who I'm going to try and sell it, so you should do it straight away, stop messing about. Just a great shape. I mean, I'm open to uh, a very sensible offer, considering its yeah. condition. So, you know, if it's a good bargain for you, I mean, I don't know what you've got in mind, really. Well-worn leather club chairs like these are always popular with designers and photographers. Drew knows that even if he does nothing to this chair, it will sell for around £220. Been a bit mean at 100 that's kind of the figure I had in my head. So. Yeah, it's just a great shape, good size, very commercial thing, something I can sell pretty easily. Um, trendy at the moment in any condition. Oh, I love that Rocket Man helmet. Do you wear it around the house when there's nobody, uh, el when there's nobody else in? Only on, <laughs> only on Sundays. <laughs> he was telling me that that was the one that the guy wore at the Rocketeer premiere. The guy at the star put it on and, and walked around with it. There was only a 1,000 made of them. There you go. Fits like a glove. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's, On my Vespa. It's you, mate. It's you. It's absolutely you. It really is. <laughs> well, it's good. And you've got a Batman suit as well. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh... You just never cease to amaze me. I didn't see that before. <laughs> 
you got a time machine and a Batman suit? I made the majority of it. The cowl came from America, and it's all wearable. Halloween. Do you wear it? Uh, I did last Halloween, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's a big thing in your life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You can try that one as well if you want to. No, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the rubber suit to you. And that owl's cool. Inside, it's all rigged oh, up so that the wings will flap. Like a robot inside. And the head will turn, so it's a... I thought it was uh, the owl's a, sh a shop display thing, uh, but Drew had a look at it and he seemed to think that it was more of a film prop. So I'll have to do a bit of research on that and uh, see what it could be from. Do you pay a lot for it? I think it was two, 200. Around that seems really cheap. It's just so beautifully put together in the back, all those air rams and pumps. You can see the rams working inside. You just need a tiny little compressor, little tiny little thing like that, and you get this working. I'll, I'll happily give you a profit on that if you want to get rid of it. I'm sure you, you don't want to sell it, but... Well, it's one of Sarah's favourite favorite yeah. pieces, I'm afraid. No, it's lovely. But... You know, I'd happily... Would I double your money on it? I'd probably get very close, I think. Okay. Just as it is, yeah. you know, just yeah. buying it in to do it, to, to fix it up. I don't think she's going to go for it. But... Can't blame her, I wouldn't. I think he's dropped incredibly lucky on something there for a couple hundred pounds. What a great thing. OK, here's the spare room, Drew. All right. Which, as you can see, is a bit uh, cluttered. Yeah. I think these have become quite... Yeah. I was going to display them. <laughs> 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 Oh, mine's flashing. Oh, no. I was like nine. You know, oh, that's a good your gun's better than my gun. But they're becoming more and more popular. I've seen, I've seen one go for two hundred pounds. I think I bought that for forty-five. Okay, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to buy those at reasonable money. This you might quite like. This is probably up your street. Yeah, I do like that. Uh, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Very original. Untouched. You put, you have to put that on there and they just calibrate your eyes or something, don't they, to it? They move these. I've had that. It looks like a face, you know, when you turn it on its side. It's got, like, the eyes and the nose sticking out and the whole thing. So there's got that about it I liked as well. And it was also really well made, the engineering side of it, and the finish was fantastic. Antique optical instruments like these are popular with a small number of collectors, window dressers, photographers and prop houses. This example could sell for around £240. I'll go straight in with the highest bid, 50. OK. Yeah? Yeah. What's that? Okay. That's, uh, that's uh, sound activated. Ugh! <laughs> that's disgusting. Did that ter terrifying. terrifying. They were just fascinated by it. I think it's brilliant. Oh, I like that. Are they foxes' like skulls? They're foxes that I put in uh, a box there. But Where did you get the skulls from? They're just found on walks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like those. And you've made the little box nice. for yeah. it. It's just a nice little trophy thing. But in a quite a sort of old Victorian Jekyll Hyde type of way as well that I like. Could, um, for your type, £60? Would that yeah. be all right? Does that cover yeah. you? Yeah, no, you can no. Go and find, you can go and find some more skulls. Well, I've already, I've already started the next... Uh... <laughs> Next one. <laughs> God, you've got a lot of dead foxes <laughs> around here, haven't you? <laughs> this just fits in with everything we do, so my regular customers are going to go, yeah, yeah, I like that. You can, take the, you can have the other two. Are you sure? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good of you. That's great, cos that one's... I think these could be mounted on the wall as well, couldn't they? I had a really good day today here with Drew and Julia, and they've been uh, good fun, and, uh, yeah, it's been an experience, and I've enjoyed it, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, initially I was just like, I just thought oh, it was just a little house call, we might get the odd bit, but to get a big pile of stuff and to see all his cool stuff and, uh, and to meet his family was, was great. I really liked it. What do you reckon, James? How much would you want? A quid? <laughs> I can't give you a quid. Oh, OK. How about £10? Pounds? £10? Pounds? Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Is that a deal? Thanks, James. I'll take that for £10. Pounds. Thank, Thank you, mate. You. James is tough. He's a hard bargainer. He got from me from a pound to £10 pounds like that. Brilliant. He's a great guy and he's got some mad gear. He really has. We've driven through hell and high water this week to find something and I'm really excited at the stuff we've managed to score from Jeremy's place. It's brilliant. So I'm, I'm really pleased and we can go back up to Wales and show the guys what we've found.
Very Jamie, nice to meet you, Drew. A real pleasure. I have enjoyed it no end. I've enjoyed it too. <laughs> what looked like a bad trip turned out OK, thanks to Jeremy. Drew now has a van full of unique and quirky items. He heads back to the shop, confident that his salvage hunter reputation is well and truly intact. Cool, well, I enjoyed that. That was good. And good stuff. We did well. We bought well. We bought all the right bits and bobs there that I like. Some real oddments. I keep trying to buy normal stuff. I just can't do it. He's, he's made for the trade. I was going to say, he's made for the trade because he's slightly not quite with us. <laughs> you know? Back in Wales, the team gets word that Drew's heading back with a van full of goods. They clear the decks, ready for the new stock. Mark, he's got tons. He's got half a van full. Hello, Mel Mel. Hello, babes. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? All right. You look very, very, tired. very, very tired. Oh, there you go. Fruit picking ladders, Gav. Need for restoration. Loads of different bits. We're doing it, testing your eyes on. <laughs> but it's cool, isn't it? That's cool. It's a sculptural sort of look yeah. to it, so I quite like that. Just needs a clean. But it was um, a strange collection of stuff. These are good. I'll have to restore these. Shop, pub, restaurant thing. It's always open. Same with clothes. This. We won't restore this, we'll sell it as it is. Careful. Gavin, careful. Whoa, 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 you're going to rip it. Careful. Well, I know you haven't come back with a van full, but. It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. And in a matter of days, the chair from Jeremy Trinder is bought by an advertising agency who run a trendy multi use venue in Sheffield's regenerated Kellam Island. The team have what they wished for plenty of work to keep them busy and a shop full of stuff. Ding ding. Go to the shop. Drew and Julian set out on the road once again. This time they're passing Sheffield, so Drew takes the opportunity to see where the chair from Jeremy ended up. He's visiting designers Tim and Sally, who've used it in their latest project. The chimney house is a meeting room, it's a meeting space for businesses, and then by evening we transform into a pop-up dining hall. Tim. Drew. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. In the area, thought I'd call in. Sally. Hi, Hi. nice to see Hi. you. Ah, there it is. There's the That's it. Hey, it looks good. It really compliments what we do in here, so, yeah. It looks the part, it feels the part, it's tactile, it's interesting. People just instantly flock to it because they want to know what it feels like, what it is to sit in it. What I like about the chair is that not everybody will like it. It creates an interesting talking point. It looks good there. It does look the part, doesn't it, in the corner there? Yeah, it's nice. Coming here today and seeing our stuff in action, being used makes what I do seem real. It makes sense of it. And we so often don't see where it goes. So it's nice to see where it's being used and in a really modern and funky application. Couldn't be any better. On Salvage Hunters, it's Salvage Hunter versus Hoarders. I'm a dealer's nightmare in that I won't part with anything. Drew gets a lesson in negotiation. Cash. Cash. And a lesson in frustration. He won't let me buy anything. Oh, my God, yes! But can he beat the men who never sell? Definitely a tough nut to crack, this one. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> Woo! That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. Helped by his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up the street. Yeah. Salvage hunters are an odd breed, hunting down the weird and the wonderful, but they're nothing compared to the legendary British hoarder. This week we've set ourselves a challenge of going to see some hoarders, collectors, um, eccentrics, whatever you want to call them, God love them, we need them. Uh, they don't really want to sell anything, and they never want to sell anything, but they've got plenty to sell. And these guys, the one thing that knits them together is the fact that they absolutely adore 
what they're collecting. They really, really do it. I'm sure they'll sell me something. Drew and his sidekick Julian set out on a five-hour drive to Dorchester to lock horns with their first hoarder, Jeff Tite. Scrapyard's been here 60-odd year, so I um, took it over from my father. He's 89, so he's getting on a bit, but he's all right. He comes out and does a few things. We buy him mainly cars. We have a few lorries and farm implements. What do you reckon? Left or right? Right. Right is. You look left. You should go right. I'm not the driver. I'm going right now. Okay. Have a look. See if there's anything. Ooh, looks promising. This is great. There's tons of stuff here. Tons of stuff. Hello. How you doing? I'm Drew. Yeah, I'm Jeff. Jeff, this is Jules. <laughs> yeah, how you doing? Hello, Jeff. <laughs> this place looks really promising. There's a few cars growing the brambles there. But what's he's this? He's a then? diesel roller. That diesel one. roller? He was petrol power fan, but he's converted to diesel. I've just driven one of those. Brilliant fun, though, to drive. Oh, it's worth more for scrap than it's worth as a roller. <laughs> what's it worth like that? He's about six tonne nuts, so he's like 1,200 quid without the engine, even. Oh, it's just because of the scrap value? Just, yeah, just for the weight of it. So, um, Seems a shame to weigh it in, doesn't it? Yeah, really? that's why it's still here. <laughs> 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 Money and everything, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> but no, no, but definitely no. I couldn't. No. Not my sort of thing. Jeff's yard is full of cars and vans, but some of them have been there so long, identifying them is impossible. This is clearly not going to be straightforward for Drew. Some studio bakers. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> been there a couple of years. This summit father collected years ago. He's he's always liked things like that. Well, there's two in there, is there? Was there it? is, yeah. There's one behind as well. Blimey, they've been there a while, haven't they? The American classic can be worth as much as £12,000 if fully restored. This one is worth a bit less. No, I'm going to take them, Jules. Get them on the van. Yeah, look at that. I'll get a shovel. Take them out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a werewolf next door. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he won't come out to after dark if you're right. <laughs> we'll go around the other side. There's just so much stuff here, it's just, and it's been here an awful long time. Drew thinks he's spotted a gem, an early 20th century wrought iron gate. Is there another gate to go with this, Jeff? It's just the one of these gates just... here. Do you know where there's another one? Where the other one is? No, I think it must be just that one, I think. That's a shame. <laughs> but half of it is missing, and he moves on. Even Drew is struggling, but then his salvage hunter instinct kicks in and he spots something that could potentially make this trip worthwhile. It's all his saddle stone. These mushroom-shaped stones probably date from the 18th century and were used to elevate granaries and hay racks away from the ground to protect them from vermin. Today, they're very desirable ornaments, and garden designers will pay up to £350 a piece. There's how many here? One, two... Drew often finds one or two saddle stones, but Jeff seems to have a large number. This could be a great find. Quite a few. How many have said there? It's about seven now, is there? Yeah, it must be about seven, seven or eight. Th these are all for sale, are they? Yeah, he has had a few of them, yeah. Oh, great. But if Drew wants them, he'll have to deal with Mr Tite Senior. Is this the boss? That's my father, yeah. Hello there. Um... Hi, Mr Tite. Drew. Tite my name and Tite my nature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like the staddle stones you've got. There's quite a few. I think there's I think there's probably 12 altogether. Yeah. And 10 that I can use. Yeah. I think they've got tops and that aren't damaged on the basis. About 225 a piece. Really? Yeah, we've got to start up somewhere. We've got to start somewhere, yeah. Let's start really much. high. Yeah, you knock too much off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy all of them, so I, I need to get the price down as low as I can. What if I said I was going to take ten? Mm. What could you do if I took a big lump of them, a lot of them? Ten. I'd, I'd be after quite a discount, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. A couple grand. I was hoping to buy them and buy all of them, everything, for one fifty each, which would be fifteen hundred. Yeah. If it's, I'll pull out as many as I can. If I find more, I'll pay you the same for more of them. Because um, some are good. Some I'm going to make good money on. Yeah. And some aren't so good. Mm. Some have got good tops and some have got no tops at all or a mismatched top. So it would be that. Mm. That sort of money. What do you reckon? 
175 apiece. At 175 apiece. OK, I'll dig out as many as I can. Okay. Good deal. Enjoy that. It's good. Finally, Drew has a good deal, but old Mr Tight has a final surprise to let Drew know who's boss. Cash. Cash? Yeah. I'll see what I can do. I can see what I can do. Have you got a bank nearby? Yeah, OK. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you've got more of a shop in here as well? Yeah. Am I all right to have a poke around in here? Yeah, of course you can. OK. <laughs> Now formally invited, Drew wades into the house at a full-blown hoarder's den. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> where do you start? Very difficult to take in. God, he collects anything, doesn't he? How much are these, Mr. Tight? These things, how much are these? Opaline, or white glass, was popular in the 19th and early 20th century and is increasingly popular with designers at bars and restaurants. These could easily bring around £120 each. £15 a pair. Let me give you 30 quid for the pair. He said he's going to give you £30 for the two of them. £30? Yeah, because he said uh, you didn't ask enough. Oh. And I've never heard anybody say that about you before. <laughs> <laughs> with the ice well and truly broken, Drew tries his luck with a slice of 50s nostalgia. Hairdresser's chest. Mid-20th century furniture is growing in popularity, and Drew would have no trouble selling a pair like this for around £150. What do you, what do you reckon? How much for these, Mr Tight? Um... £40 a pair. Yeah, they're OK. I think they're quite cool. Yeah, what did you say, 40 quid? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Drew has taken on his first order and won, but there's no time to gloat as there are several tons of stones that need to be loaded onto the van. <laughs> I was just getting warmed up. The van, as Julian would say, is on its ass, and it really is. I don't think we can get much more in there. It is full. This will throw us over the weight limit. Glad Drew dropped by. He was a bit of a laugh, a bit of a laugh and a joke. Yeah, it's a good time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you very much. I'm really glad I called in. Yeah. Uh, and any more you find in the garden, God knows where around here, yeah. stick them on a pallet, I'll have them. OK. Just give me a call. We'll, we'll take the rest. At base, the team can spot the signs of a good haul even before the van doors are opened. It's pretty loaded. It's dented it. Yeah. <clears throat> Julian! Ah. Come on up. Um, loads of stuff. There you go. Staddles, though. Staddles. Staddles, Staddles. Yeah. Sales manager Mark and Drew's wife Rebecca know their garden mushrooms from their Staddle stones. But the question is, who will unload? Jules? That'll be Julian, then. Bring on the forklift. Where's the dog? Inside. All right. These are going to go straight in. Good, huh? <laughs> Where'd you steal this one from? Let's try and get as much as we can on. You can give Mark a hand um, moving those out of the way quickly. Where do you want them displaying in the showroom? Put them in the building, not outside. And I think they look so much more interesting. But I bought some more stuff from it. Got these, which although they need a lot of resto, good polish. I thought they were a good look. Restorer Gavin is charged with bringing the 50s hairdresser's chairs back to life. See how what you can do with this. 
Yeah. And if you can't, we may strip them and just spray the frames. But more than likely, in that condition, a good polish, and we'll just put a glue patch in there underneath it. We got these from the same guy. I mean, they're a bit scruffy, but they're earlier than most. You see the seeds in the glass on these? Mm. So they're just a slightly earlier variation of that. The Staddle Stones are fantastic because you very rarely get more than one or two. To find 12 Staddle Stones in the same place is a pretty good find, actually. And they're good sellers. Uh, the stuff Drew's brought back today is quite varied. Uh, good selection. Another day, another hoarder. This time it's a three-hour trip to Buxton. But this one makes old Mr. Tight look like a part-timer. Drew and Julian are off to meet Chris Sugden Smith. I am an inveterate hoarder. I probably hoard everything, actually. Anything that the work in it impresses me or that has a bit of age about it, I collect. He's got a collection of stuff from motorbikes to trucks to antiques to architectural fittings, farm machinery, modern, old, anything, and joy of joy. Doesn't sell anything. Oh well. But I reckon I can get him to sell me something. My thinking is, if he's impossible to buy from, that means he's got loads of really good stuff he's never sold. So, isn't it my turn to have a go? This is the place. Oh, that looks fun. Can we get in here? Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi, Drew. We spoke on the phone earlier about, uh, about some stuff you've got. How high? Okay. Yeah. Where would we start? I'd start off in the field, if you want. Over here? Vehicles, yeah. OK, brilliant. Okay. Lead on. Blimey, we've got all sorts here, haven't you? Yeah. Finding places like this is still a thrill. You know, there was always a guy down the road who had a field full of old cars and old machinery or loads of old furniture or something. My initial desire was to have a museum, and the, the main reason why, why I have all this uh, ramble. Chris has kept every single vehicle he's ever owned. They now rust in peace in his car graveyard. My ex used to call it the herbaceous car park, as I park them up. So all these have been yours? <laughs> yes. It may look like a dump, but to Drew, it's a field full of potential treasures. Is this as far back as your little car graveyard goes, is it? Yes, this is it, it is does. It? That's the first row. I've really wanted to preserve it for the future. Is this one you went chasing women in, that one? Yes. <laughs> Romantic interludes in the back. <laughs> in order to buy from Chris today, I need to find some common ground with him. I'm not a dealer. I've never wheeled and dealed. As with many hoarders, Chris is happy to show off his treasures. And unusual treasure they are, too. That is a cement mixer. What's the interest in cement mixers, then? I'm obsessed with them. I collect them. <laughs> Even for me, that's a real weird one. That's a real straight-to-the-top-of-the-list of nuts things to collect. I've got 43, I think. 43? Mm. Somebody's got to collect them, I suppose. Although it's a very small market, collectors are willing to pay up to £200 for vintage cement mixers but they haven't really caught Drew's imagination, and he moves on. Drew and Julian make their way through the cars and brambles. Eventually, they spot a potential buy, wrought iron gates. I like that gate you've got shoved down the side of that green container there. All these gates are of interest to me, but this sort of estate gate, the bigger the better, sort of 10 foot plus yeah. is what we're after, but they're hard to get at that size. They aren't smashed to bits. But that one's OK. These are highly sought after in home restorations and could easily fetch £500. It's the big gate, but the little I'll show you the little ones in, uh, in the back of this pickle. That's just, it's a big book gate and a little gate. Yes. Yeah, that's good. OK. It's very, yeah, this is my sort of thing. Is it? Yeah, yeah. this is the sort of thing I'm looking for. They're very early 20th century, say 1900, 1905. They're in pretty untouched original condition as well. They've had no welding, no cutting, nothing done to them, and they're a good height. I can think about it, I suppose. OK. The guy who never sells anything was, like, teetering on, yeah, I'm going to sell you these. And I thought, oh, great, I'm going to be able to buy this. <laughs> OK, so where next, then? Let me just go in the shed, if you want. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> You've won the uh, award for the best shed in Britain award here, Chris. It's this huge shed 
with three square feet on the floor that you can get in. That's it. You know, there's enough for two people to stand next to each other. And then it's just solid, straight up to the ceiling. You know, and there's this, like, lethal upside-down broken ladder to get up. And it's just packed to the roof full of stuff. Look at this place. God, it's fantastic. I'm trying to take all the sheer volume of stuff you've got here. Are these something you'd sell? Yeah, I've actually got those for the horse girls to hang the clothes on. Oh, right, OK. I've not fitted them yet. Not for sale? No. Not for sale, OK. Inside the shed, Drew's beginning to realise just what he's dealing with. I've come across lots of hoarders in the past and there's always a project they're going to do. So I just thought, well, let's just start asking, let's just start throwing things out and saying, do you want to sell that? No. Do you want to sell that? No. How about this? No. Quarter mile mark. Cool thing. Mile posts are a favourite amongst railway collectors and can command £200 a piece. Is that for sale, Chris? No, it's not odd that long, actually. That's something I bought at a railway uh, auction. OK. I like the bulkhead light you've got in there as well. Are those anything for sale? Yeah, just for installation here in time, actually. So they're not for sale, no. those ones there? Are these something that would sell? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> that big signal you've got there, the big red-handled yeah. thing with the white yeah. on there in 24. I've got to ask, I know what the answer is, but is that, is that for sale? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> OK. I'm a dealer's nightmare, possibly, in that I won't part with anything. There's so much stuff up here I want to buy. The frustration today is Chris knows I'm here to buy and he won't let me buy anything. He could drive somebody around the bend for you, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I could have a pot of gold this, but he's not going to sell me anything. He's not interested in money. I've just got this fetish for keep hoarding and collecting stuff. Every single piece of this, he loves. Drew senses this hoarder is getting away from him and tries to bring the conversation back to what he thought was a surefire sale. While we're up here and discussing things, then, what about the gates we found outside, the pair of double gates? And uh, the uneven ones. The uneven ones, so there'd be a, the, the, the pedestrian gate and the other, yeah. other gate as well. They are really for the front of this property, actually. Typical hoarder. I've got a project for them. I'm going to do something with them. He's got a lifetime of projects here if he lived to, to be 300. Cutting his losses, Drew leaves. I hate leaving empty-handed, but sometimes you have to know when to fold. Be in touch. And I'm sure you will be. You sure? <laughs> yep. OK. Yeah. All right, good to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, I feel bad about not having sold him something, but I've made a friend and a fellow enthusiast today, so that's, you know, it's fine. Today was absolutely bloody useless for making any money. Yes. <laughs> I asked him about, what, 20, 30 items? Nothing, not interested. Doesn't seem like he's interested in money at all. But this salvage hunter doesn't stay down for long and has a plan B. Uh, I have a new lead, it's over 100 miles away, but I'd rather go and do that than face everybody with an empty van. Drew and Julian point their van east towards Ellis Manor in Grantham, Lincolnshire. After two hoarders in a row, they're looking forward to dealing with someone who actually has things he wants to sell. OK, so we're down in Lincolnshire. A pal of mine down here has given me a hot tip uh, about a local guy who's rebuilding a manor house, been doing it for 30 years. He's got some overspill of stuff you might want to get rid of. This building perfectly encapsulates a whole of early European and British history from the time of the Northern Renaissance. What we're trying to do now is to grow this into a cultural centre. Raising funds, it's very much what it is about. It's another real odd lead. Odd ones do work. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Wow. Well, that's pretty damn impressive, isn't it? Look at the colour of the stone. Very unusual. Clive. Yeah. Hi, it's Drew. We spoke on the phone earlier about uh, you have some antiques for sale, I believe. Come on in. Pretty amazing, dramatic building you've got here. It doesn't look British at all. No, very so, conti continental, I'm amazed you've noticed. Most people think it's Jacobean, and I say to them, you need no. to look again. No, it's a million miles away from Jacobean, isn't it? Oh, much older and much further away. Yeah. Houses like this in this country evolved over periods of time, so they'd have built, say, the main house, and then there'd have been other pieces built on and knocked down. And when they do that, pieces survive, pieces are put away, so there's always a maybe that there's something interesting. Legend has it that there's one gargoyle which is quite possibly the earliest bespectacled gargoyle in the land. Really? Yeah, and we, we keep a picture for the kids when they come round. How old's that? 
the tower was said to have been built in 1519. Wow. We suspect it's Ellis himself, because in all the early wells, he said it was he was partially sighted or blind. Is he looking over the place? Yeah. Overlooking his building. I had some beams in stock recently, and they had that same ending to the carving there. With that chamfer at the end, we're looking at a 17th century. Mm. So we do feel that the ceilings were put in at a later date. This wall, this is said to go back to 14th century. Though this wall has been here, it belonged to another building. So it was this ceiling height being changed? What's the, yes. What are those things there? They imagine, the experts, and I say the experts because they come in and they try to read the building, that we had a coffered ceiling. This, as it stands, is too crude for the status of the house. Would have had. So, so a coffered ceiling is, is panels, they're, they're, panelling? Exactly. So exactly. it's like roof ceiling panelling? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly it, a perfect description. And you can see where they've been cut off. And incidentally, if you trip there, don't be embarrassed because that's a sword step. There's one which is about two inches higher than all the others. OK. Because if the laird was being pursued, you'd dash up the stairs, his assailant trip. would trip, and this bends to the right, so you'd turn with the sword. I've never heard that. If I didn't call in here today, I'd not know that. This is incredible. Well, these are said to be the most important and extensive in Britain. This is the emergence of the new middle classes. Yeah. I found it extremely refreshing talking history with him because it also made me look at certain things from a different perspective. So this is nouveau riche? Exactly, yeah. exactly. There you go. No, it's really staggeringly good. Yeah. So does it, this have national monument status? Yeah, I have to look after these. Even though, yes, they look great at the moment, there's an awful lot of distemper, lime wash, which is still covering. Now, when all of that is professionally removed, it'll be phenomenal. Clive is keen to show off the house, a huge and very expensive restoration project. This is a good sign, as it means he needs to sell things to raise cash. The cost of restoring all boils down to money. We need to raise just over 100,000 to have the whole of the upper floor done. Well, that's, it's, I think that would be money well spent. The paintings on the wall are really special. What he's looking after is British national heritage. But so far, there's no sign of what's for sale. Not for sale, obviously. No. no. <laughs> we, well, if you can get it off the wall. <laughs> we do have a garage, and perhaps Some we should look in there. Sheds yeah. and stuff. We can have we a look through. Look. Yeah. I need to be in the outbuildings and in the sheds, finding the little things that they're not using around this house anymore. What have you got in here, then? This is our shed. There's bits and pieces. And sure enough, motorbike enthusiast Drew spots a tarpaulin covering a very familiar-shaped object. Where did this come from? Well, that's, um, I've had that for a long time now, as you can see by the tax disc down there. 1983, mm. the last time it was on the road. Mm. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's antique. That's quite a layaway, isn't it? Even in its neglected state, a motorbike like this can sell for £750. 6,500 miles. Yeah. And new. it's a genuine 6,500 miles. It's a single cylinder, is it 500 yet? I should imagine the poor little thing's seized up now. And next to the motorbike is something with a little less horsepower, but backs of charm. I like this old bike you've got down here as well. It's one of the early tradesmen's bikes. So that was here when we came, and we just put the name of a place on it. That's quite a nice thing. An interesting old bike, actually. I can sell a bike like that. It's not my normal fare, but then again, what is my normal stuff? With a little bit of spit and polish, this 1940s delivery bike could bring in around £250. I'm not quite sure on well, the value of something like this. I think what you've got to do is not so much think about what it is, yeah. but what it will do. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is where I'm going to have to differ. <laughs> Clive wants the best possible price to help pay for his restorations, but Drew isn't getting on board quite yet. Is it worth 200 quid? I can tell you it's a great deal more. Is it? Oh, my yeah. God, God, yes! Yeah, so... What would you want for it? Um, let's say 700. Oh, 700 pounds. I'm not going to pay you 700 quid. 700, 700. 
primarily now I'm concentrating on starting to get those wall paintings restored because we owe it to the nation for them to be seen at their best. What about the bike behind them? Well, now, obviously, that has an intrinsic um, aesthetic value as a, yeah. an old piece. I'm thinking about buying the motorbike, you see. I'm thinking, well, up that a bit and then go in for the bike. The condition's not brilliant on this. Do you, do you think? I yeah, mean, it's yeah, all yeah. very bad. Yeah. But what has got other things going for it. It's original paint, all the original transfers and paintings and badges and everything on yeah, is all it's there. there. It's right? there, there's nothing missing. Obviously, I've got to make some money on it. I was going to say 450 on this one. And I'll, I'll push that one up to two, and that gives you 650 for the pair. As the negotiation falters, Clive plays his trump card. Look, we're not that far. Why don't we say, and knowing what this is being turned into... Yeah, it's going to turn... It's good. Why I, don't I, I, we I'm say 700? To... Clive really did hit me with the ultimate sort of deal maker. I appreciate what he's doing, so... I really shouldn't know, shouldn't have, but it's like, OK, fine, we'll go the extra mile. 700's fine. OK. Thanks, Clive, and I hope the money goes well. It certainly yeah, shall. Yeah, I'll yeah, make very good. sure. Motorbike enthusiast Julian takes charge of the scramble bike. It's just an iconic shape, isn't it? This is clearly going to be his restoration project. Drew gets to ride the push bike. Oh, dear. Grab hold of that. No, like, that's nice. Look at the sign in the middle. I really love what you're doing with the house. It's, it's fantastic, and uh, hats off to you. And, and hopefully we'll see you again. OK. Cheers. OK. I'll make some time when you're coming back. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Clive. See you again. Right, Bye-bye. Yeah, safe journey. With the future of the medieval wall paintings a little bit more secure, Drew and Julian head back to base with their two-wheeled booty. I enjoyed today. What a guy. I enjoyed looking at, uh, at Clive's house. It was just really, really interesting. Nobody can accuse you of just buying the same old, same old. <laughs> what it's can a, you say? It's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. I like the delivery bike, though, a lot. Uh, and I think we can uh, turn that over quite quickly. It's not going to take more than a few hours to get that polished up properly, pump the tyres up, fix the punctures, whatever it needs. Drew and Rebecca have been married for almost 10 years. Over this decade, Drew has learned that showing Rebecca the scramble bike first might be a bad idea. So the delivery bike is first off the bat. Which was for Gavin to restore. Yeah. Ooh. Basically, it's a delivery bike. Just needs a really, really good clean and a polish. Get that off. See if we can find an original seat. I've got a, a more original one somewhere in stock. Leave this on. Cool. <laughs> There you go. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's an Ellswick. Really good clean the polish, and I've got the pump for the for that somewhere. How old is it? Uh, I'd say 40s. But he can only put it off for so long. I got mm. one more thing from him as well. 1979 XT500. When I saw that scramble bike, I thought, oh no, not another one. Mr. Pritchard, it's not for you. No, it's not for me. For it's you. more or less sold. Thank goodness. Luckily for Drew's marriage, he sold the bike to one of his motorbike enthusiast friends on the way home. The other items enter what Drew calls the production line to get them from junk to desirable objects for sale. The amount of effort that goes into the restoring and the photography and then the waiting and then having to usually get knocked down a little bit on the price and then the packing and the shipping and the payment. There's all that before, you know, from, from there, finding it in the shed through to end user. It's never so easy. Drew's recent encounters with hoarders have brought mixed success. Now he faces one of the most notorious in the country, John Digby Lovell. My grandmother bought the farm in 1948, and that developed into a second-hand farm machinery dealership, which lasted until recently. John has an incredibly varied collection, and he opens it to the public at selected times. Many have tried to buy his objects and failed, but to Drew, those are fighting words. Hi, Mr. Lovell. Yes. Hi, my name's Drew. Well, we're here to, we're looking for things to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're dealers and we're looking for architectural and decorative items mm -hmm. and garden items. Mm -hmm. So just wondering 
if we're able to look around. You can look around, but there's very little for sale. John lays out clear rules as to where Drew and Julian can and can't go hunting. All the sheds open, are we able to go the, through those? Those are all open down there. Yeah. And I'll open that one when I'll move that tractor in a minute. That'd be brilliant. OK, well, that's very good of you. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. I love this. It's not true. Early mobile workman's hut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, isn't it? I just saw it parked in my garden. Deck chair outside, radio going inside, glass of beer, and happy as Larry. Ho, ho, ho. Millions of spades. Not like the wobbly lines that we do, then. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much stuff in here. There's a lot to see, isn't there? Look at this. Bond microcar. These 60s classics are hugely popular, and fully restored, a car like this could bring around £3,000. 44,000 like miles. Seriously? Every one of them terrifying, painful, cold and slow. There'll be somebody out there wants it, won't there? Even though it only has 44,000 miles on the clock, Drew leaves this three-wheeler to its fate and moves on. I've been round there. Oh, they're good. Just roof supports for a building. Got to be. Something like that, aren't they? Yeah. Just internal supports for, like, a gar an old, old garage. Cast iron. Mm. Too Fresh much. Things. Too difficult. Yeah. He's found nothing yet, but Drew is in his element. This is raw salvage hunting. John just has a assortment of stuff. I think the common theme is you're not going to see another one. For this type of digging, this is, like, the best. This is the, my favourite. Just felt like a kid again. There's so much stuff here, I, I really need to find some stuff now. I, I need to find some, something I can buy. I've been to the back of beyond and found them. There's nothing there. <laughs> have you been to that back far corner? Yes. You haven't? Go on. I have. Go back in. Up yours, I've been. Go on, go back in. I've, or been. I've got to do it. Not You're going. in there now. Go in. No. Nope. Right, I've got to go. Been there. there. Come on. You go. Can't be that bad. You made the right performance out of that, didn't you? Uh, how do I get down from here without breaking my leg? They've checked it properly now. You sure you're sure? You don't yep. want to go back in and check it again no, no. just on the off chance? No, 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 there's nothing there. All right, OK. There's nothing there. You sure? Oh, hello. That's nice. This is a Georgian overthrow by the very late 18th century, early 19th century. Um, and this would have been on the entranceway to your house or a church, but there'd be two pillars, and this would be between the two. So you'd have, like, an opening. And then this chap would be up there like that. Yeah? Either, yeah. either either side of the pillars going down. You can see where it's been leaded in there. The overthrow was the rarest thing here today, and obviously, for me, the best thing as well. The Georgian period, for me, is the best. It's got the best design attributes to everything they built, to, from houses to fireplaces to lighting to furniture. It, it really is the, the period I like the most. He obviously knows what it is if it's down here. We don't know if we don't ask, mate. I want to get round to the other side of the, of the yard. <coughs> Just do this bit here and then we'll go around, OK? And finally, the hunter finds some prey in a skip. Oh, that's cool. Wow, look at that. That is cool, isn't it? In the skip. I like that. In the skip. I reckon that's probably going to be for sale, yeah. I'll put money on it. So it's good. Base isn't broken. Mountain on the bottom's not broken. These will free up easy enough. Yep. I like it, it's good. And then he spots another piece with potential. Things are looking up. Not decorative. They're pretty good, aren't they? I like these. There's a pair of them, yeah? Same size. Uh, three, I think, mate. Right? No, that one's different. Isn't that one? Two, that one? Oh, no, it's, yeah, it's the same. Just a good structural thing, but people can build projects. They can build porches and various things around the house with these. We'll ask him about those. I'm not going to drag those around the yard. For a salvage hunter like Drew, it's all about finding special items that he knows will appeal to his customers. But when that item comes in multiples, even better. And it looks like Julian has just hit the jackpot. Drew! Yeah? You need to see these, mate. Ooh. We found about 30-odd stacking chairs, but they're quite good-looking ones, particularly the green ones, and they've got the wood slats. They were just quite charming. Some are worse, some are better. Can you just count how many we've got that look like they're usable? 
It looks like there's about 20% of these are scrap. Take slats off the bottoms to fix others. These are ideal for a little pub, club, restaurant, that type of thing, aren't they? Yep. Pretty and good. the most important thing is, bizarrely, with all these little cheapy chairs like this, is they stack. But when dealing with a collector like John, finding something is not the same as buying it. Oh. Another one of these chairs. Oh. Launch it. Sure. Yeah. We've got three of those in the shop already. Don't break the wood. <laughs> yeah. OK. No, we're done here. Let's go through. To, can we go in the sheds now? Go on, him. Oh, cool. Look at this. This is a great shed. This is brilliant. He's got tons of gear in here. I've got a feeling this is the bit he opens to the public and it's not for sale. There's a pair of bench ends down here, but they're really buried. I can't see if they're broken yet, but they look pretty good. Mr Lovell has said not to move anything in this shed. Until we've spoken to him and he can say, yes, move it or don't, don't move it, in which case we'll then find out whether we can even have it or Res not. Respect what he says then and so. let's, let's leave it where it is. Let's go and ask him. That's going to be the easiest thing to do. OK. Yeah? Yeah. Just as we were about to do the deal, I spotted an old trough in the corner of the yard. That's good, isn't it? That's nice. Not really exciting thing, beautiful, but it's exactly the sort of thing my customers want and I could definitely easily sell it. Drew sells troughs like these as planters to garden designers. An example like this could fetch as much as £150. All the legs on it? Certainly seem to be. Yeah, I can feel those on both sides, whether they continue across or not. Wicked. Just a feeding trough or... Well, it's just a water trough, isn't it? It's great looking, though. He doesn't seem too interested in that. He's got the plough leaning on it. Mm. Let's ask him. Down here, the old cast iron bath full of water on the side there. It's in really nice yeah. condition, so that's great. Well, it's been in that store down the bottom for okay. since about 1970, I would think. Okay. We had one stolen already, and that was even bigger than the one I've got now. No, he wouldn't be for sale. Not for sale. No. Okay. We bathe our dogs in that. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, knew that was one was coming, you know, but had to ask. Behind the door, over there in the corner, there's a metal arch. It's painted black, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we've just done it. You know what it is? Around about 1860, I would think. Yeah. That was in the back garden. It's a nice We're thing. keeping it. OK. All yeah. right, there we go. All right, well, there you go. That's that yeah. then, isn't it? <laughs> Won't take an offer on it. No, I should keep it. And he knows what it's worth. And he knows what it is. The lamp we found right in the back, that was in the skip? Yes, we put it there recently. OK. And that hadn't really been touched for probably 40 years. Once rewired, this industrial uplighter could fetch as much as £350. I'd give you £70 for the lamp. It's an industrial lamp, and oh, it's yes. come from a big old shed yeah. or something like that. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. It's not worth any more no. to me, but that's, that's about yeah. fair for that one. Yeah. Everybody has to live, and they only live by buying and selling as a rule. Yeah, you can have that. Well, I think that's, that's fair. OK, so, A, breakthrough. The man who never sells anything has sold me something. It may only be something you put on a skip, but the ball is now rolling. In the big shed, yes. there's a pair of cast iron bench ends, white ones, lying flat on the floor. Well, right, let's go out and have a look, shall we? have a look at those, yeah? yeah? We'll have ready. to try and pull them out. Yeah, all sorts of clutter in here. I think what we're going to have to do is pull one of them out, cos you could hardly see them. They're down there. What you might call a human ferret. He is a little ferret, isn't he? Yeah, a human sort of, ferret. He's sort of ferret-looking, isn't he? Well, I don't know about that. Yeah. Smells like a ferret. <sighs> What do you think? A nice heavy cast one, isn't he? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I just can't remember where they came from, but um, they're unusual. They're interesting. That seems all right. That seems all right, okay. I got, I got him. Victorian cast iron is hugely popular. A pair of bench ends like these could fetch almost four hundred pounds when restored. So what do you reckon, mid to late nineteenth century? I said late, you know, late. eighteen eighty onwards, perhaps. Late stylistically, aren't they? and they would restore nicely. They would, wouldn't need much, would they, to sort those out? Well, you've got to get the right timber. You know, a decent pair. Would £75? I was thinking more. OK, well, how much would you like? Certainly 100 You try and meet somewhere in the middle to suit both parties. At least 100 mm. Would 100 buy them? I think you'd have a good deal there. I think there's money to be made on those. OK. Right. Thank you very much.
So, the man notorious for not selling has sold two things. Can Drew score a hat-trick? I've kept them all these years in case somebody wants them. Yeah. Yeah. They came out of a coach house about 1860, 1865. OK. Cast-iron pillars are very popular with home restorers, and Drew has sold several similar pieces for £175 each. We've taken down many nice houses and used to restore others, and this is what restoration partly is about. Are these something you want to sell, or are these to be, yes, be sold? What would you want? There's three, but uh, One, what, what two, would you want for the three? three? I always pay about £150 for a pair of columns. Three's an odd number, and, you know, I may get left with the one. I would want 75 apiece. 75 apiece, 150. Can you 200? No, I think 75 apiece is sure. fair money. All right, let's have that. We'll have those at All that. Right. That's fine. Drew is definitely on a roll and goes in for his fourth purchase of the day. And these are the chairs. Drew's clients in the restaurant and bar trade will snap up these mid-century stacking chairs, which can easily fetch up to £40 each. What would you want to give me for those? Five or a chair. Everything else, he'd sort of knock me up a bit every single time, you know, knock me up, knock me up, knock me up every single time. So I went in low. Yeah, I suppose you could have them, because I've got some others I've just got hold of, yeah. some upholstered ones. This is what it is in keeping these older things. It's if I don't, somebody else will restore some of them. Otherwise, they may well remain in storage, out of sight, till I'm gone to ground, and uh, the auctioneers have a lovely day, enjoying themselves. Unfortunately, probably at my expense. Right, we're done? We're done. Finished? We're loaded. Good, I'm glad it took me ages to load that one. <laughs> yeah, I can well, see I, the stress you had an interesting run. afternoon. I've really enjoyed an it. an interesting morning yeah, somewhere else. Good. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we got your name and we were able to come over and see you. Thanks for that, Thank John. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, good one. Yeah, good bloke. No, did some uh, proper old-school salvage job, that yep. was, wasn't it? That was good fun, that was yeah. proper work where we, where we like to do it. Finally, Drew can head home. His triumph over this infamous hoarder means he can now present the spoils of war to his awaiting team. We went to a chap who had, like, a home museum, weird collection of stuff in his yard. So we had a sift around there and we got all these chairs off him. But we found in a skip... <laughs> which is this. Nice, isn't it? Look at all these little faces. Look at, <laughs> Look at him. So did you have to pay for that? Yeah. Uh, there was a reason it was in a skip. No, it's great. I picked it out of a skip and I gave him £70. I'll put it back in that skip. <laughs> <laughs> and charge you 70 quid. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go back into your workshop. Go on. The dungeon. Go away now. Go on. Take it one. The uplighter should keep electrician Ollie busy for a while. And there's a couple of jobs for restorer Gavin, too. I did some proper old school scavenging about as well in his warehouse he had and found these. Right under piles of stuff. Ooh, bench ends. Pretty ones, though, aren't very they? Very pretty. Yeah. yeah. Very pretty. Yeah. Very good. Lovely, aren't they? They're in really nice condition. No cracks, no breaks, nothing missing. Quite like the colour. Don't want to mess Just with them too clean. much. Lovely. Good find. That's a good find. Yeah. Very good find. Yeah. More work for you, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> Got three of these. <laughs> Mind your fingers. Fingers. There you go. Three of those. Do you know we're always asked for that sort of height? Perfect for a house. Well, they yeah. are. Yeah. Some of them are broken like that, so you just got to replace them. We've got to wax them all and clean them all up and get all the excess rust off them. Quite nice when they're done. Believe it or not, these sell quite well. 
especially in the summertime. You don't have to do too much to these. Put a coat of clear wax over all the metal work. Make sure it's nice and clean. To the photography area. Online sales manager Mark gets the pillars ready to be photographed and posted for sale. But his photo is missing a crucial ingredient. Drew's terrier, Enzo. Enzo is going to be in the shop for scale, because he's quite large pillars. Come on, come in. Right, sit. Stay, he's a good boy. And as usual, it's not long before the new items begin to fly out of the door. When it comes to hoarders, well, you win some, you lose some. Um, it's been a good week. Uh, the Staddle Stones I bought from the tights, well, we've got a, a film producer in America who's interested in, in all of them. Those beautiful bench ends I got from John Digby Lovell, they needed a lot of work, took a lot of time, but now it's restored and sold. The chairs have gone off to be used in a fashion exhibition in Berlin, fantastic. The most unusual sale of the week has been the push bike we bought from Ellis Manor. It's going to go to an artist and she's going to paint it green, put a big parrot on the side and use it to promote her art gallery. I can cycle it round Greenwich advertising the gallery when it's open or just chain it up outside and I'll make a basket for the front and the dog can ride around. Come on, here you go. Maybe not now. <laughs> On salvage hunters. Go on, get them, boys. This baronet gets all fired up. It's a real tank. Drew weighs up the options when offered a tank. 25 grand for a tank, 50 grand for a divorce. He gets taken for a ride not once but twice. And the team is stumped by what Drew's brought home. What is it? It's an unexploded World War II bomb. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello? You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up the street. Yeah. Drew Pritchard is famous for his ability to find unique and quirky items. Often, the owners of these items are unique and quirky too. The best thing about my job is the people we meet, from aristocrats to uh, eccentrics. Um, their places are difficult to get inside, as sometimes inside their heads too, but you just never know what you're gonna find when you get there. <laughs> Drew and Julian have been friends and on-off colleagues for 25 years, so each understands the salvage hunting potential of a visit to a stately home. Their first stop is five hours away in Somerset and an appointment with a rather colourful peer of the realm. Today we're trying to find Mournsall House. Uh, we've had a call from a guy called Sir Ben Slade. He rang me and he was just like, have you got cash? <laughs> have you got cash? Bring cash. Hot and stickies. Bring some green with you. I am Sir Benjamin Slade, some baronet of Mansell, and this is my home. I have many things for sale. Every, in fact, everything is for sale. Anything you want to buy, we'll make you a price. Here we are, Mansell House. God, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now that is a tree line driveway. That is. Wow, God, it's beautiful. Sir Ben's assistant, Michelle, is on hand for the tour. Nice to meet you. Hiya, Michelle. Hi there. Hiya. Hi, Julian. Hiya, Jules. How are you doing? Hello. Welcome to Mortsell House. Hi, This Drew. is the, one of the most important events that's after the Great Road through here in 878. <laughs> Chaucer was here as well. John of Gaunt and that dreadful woman, Queen Matilda. Sir Ben is a true original. I think what Britain's built on is the guys like Sir Ben. Our slades are fairly new around here. We've been stuck here since 1771. Just here to look through your sheds, to yeah. be honest with you, and try and buy some things. I am totally, absolutely motivated to get some money in right now, and I will sell anything. I hope he makes an offer for the whole damn place. About 25 million see me right. It's exactly what Drew's looking for. A stately home, an eccentric, impoverished aristocrat willing to sell. 
Let the hunting commence. This is our ballroom and dining room. The unfortunate thing about it is the floors need renewing because they're absolutely worn out. So I need some dosh off you today. I would like about 20,000 quid. It's great. If you've got the stuff, I'll spend it. <sighs> Go for that. I want it in notes as well, because if I put it in the bank, they snatch it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's one of the reasons why we have absolutely no, no money. The last of it was spent by Uncle Alfred, who was unknown as Alfred the Rake. He had 25 horses when he was master of the Avonvale Hounds, yeah. and that's where all the money went. Plus, he had six illegitimate children, been going downhill ever since then. It happens. What's up for grabs in the house? Nothing or anything at all? Everything has its price. Everything. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. I'll show you one or two interesting things here. The mirror? Yeah. It's beautiful, that mirror, isn't it? Mm. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, that's a bit special, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Lovely. I think that's a 300-year-old Florentine mirror. It must be worth a few bob. Yeah. What's it worth? Well, I think it's worth, um... Nearer 30, 20 to 30. Eccentric, yes, but Sir Ben is bang on the money with his estimate for this mirror. Right. right. Okay. I think everything in the house might be slightly too pricey for me. Yeah. Really? Yeah, well, maybe a little. Well, we maybe can a do little. a finance plan if you like. Yeah. So much okay. down, <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> Clearly, Drew needs to look for slightly less upmarket hunting grounds. So you're going to show us some sheds now, are you? Sheds? Yeah, yeah. Should we do a bit of yard now? And on the subject of hunting, Ben said, hang on a second, well, before we go outside, I just need to get my shotgun. I thought, oh, my God, I, you know, what have I done? I didn't pinch anything. Come on, boys. Keeping an eye on the cocked rifle, Drew and Julian follow into the outbuilding. Get them, boys! Get them! Oh, get them! Where's their rats got to? Hop, 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 hop! All clear! Any self-respecting rat would have done a runner. Is it safe? I don't know if it's safe, Not ben. really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the light on, Michelle? Put the lights on. <laughs> okay, watch where you, you step, go guys. First, it's dangerous. Sure. Oh! Dead rat. Dead rat. Nice. Okay. Right. Oh! Ed no! <laughs> I'll that give him a here. Drew's trained eye spots a diamond in the rough, an Edwardian fender designed to protect from the fire but with a handy seat for warming a cold backside. The fender, club fender. A fully restored Edwardian fender recently sold at Christie's for £1,625. This one is worth around £580. That's something you'd part with? I don't know, you've got to hit me. What would you want for this pigeoning, poo-encrusted thing? It's worth a powerful amount of money. It is in disgusting condition, Ben. No, no. Yes, it's covered in poo. How much have you got? £150 for this pigeon poo rusting thing. £150? Oh, yeah, look back. at the state of it. <laughs> what? It's stinking. What about a couple of hundred? 200 quid. What? 200 quid. Done. <laughs> Right, you've got the fun job. You've got to get this out I've of here. I've got to get it out of here. Oh, yeah. help. Don't worry, Jules. We've gone from £30,000 down to £200. That's much more my sort of level. So Ben's clearly now want to do some deals. I'm excited. Go get them, boys. Go on, get them, boys. Fetch them out. Sniff them out. And sniff out some money while you're about it as well. Molly, Molly, Molly. Come here. Come on. Oh, right, that's what I, I've got. I've got the creature. Right, there we are. It's now safe. Drew has found something unique, but not as unique as Sir Ben would have him believe. Where did this come from? <laughs> came out of a Medici palace, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll look at it, see if it's got any age to it. What is it? What would you call that? It's a... It's a, it's part, it's a fireplace. It's a is part it? of a chimney piece insert, yeah. Probably not from an Italian palace, but Drew suspects that this is a mid-19th century fireplace insert, extremely rare and worth around £1,500. What do you want for this one, Ben? Well, it's going to be hundreds. I don't want tier yeah. 50p. 350? Hmm. I'll have a think about that. Hey, could you go up a little bit on that? Just a frackle. Just a frackle. All right, well, look. 400 quid. Done. Done. Thank you. Lovely. So Drew's hunting has uncovered some unusual pieces. Sir Ben has been doing some hunting of his own, but it's a little more mundane in its results. I've been looking for some bloody egg cups. I've been looking everywhere for egg cups. 
Don't, don't lose them. Drew has met Sir Ben's type before and knows that, despite appearances, he needs to keep his wits about him when it comes to doing deals. This little table's quite nice. Just like the finish on it. Sort of like a fake bird's eye maple like one. It's pine, something normally I wouldn't touch, but it's just very, very pretty and the finish is good. With a bit of dusting and polishing, Drew believes this practical pine table can fetch close to £300. But once again, Sir Ben knows its value and starts the negotiations at a price that leave Drew with no profit. The colour is supposed to be worth quite a few hundred quid, isn't it? Isn't it? No, not really. No, really Sorry. honest with you. It's got to be worth two. No, not to me. It's just a simple thing. It'd have to be, it'd have to be less than 100 quid. Nothing sells for under 100 quid. You can't buy anything for 100 quid. I'm trying to buy that for 100. And these things are bloody gold dust. You... There won't be any He's beating me down now. <laughs> I'm just giving in. <laughs> oh, I'll call it 100. 100. <laughs> what, what about this one here, Ben? This, uh, this large hall bench you've got here? It came out of whites, I think when they refurbished about 100 years ago. White's is a famous gentleman's club in London, dating from 1693. If true, this would add considerable value to the piece. Are all the legs there? Yeah. It's a, it's a genuine article, all right? Yeah, that's for sure. It needs a bit of um, upholstery, isn't it? Yeah, it needs, it needs a lot of work. The frame's good, though. The oh, the, well. the horsehair's original. Yeah. Drew knows that a fully refurbished 19th century club bench could support a £1,500 price tag. So where do you want to be? How much do you want me to buy for this for you? How much? Grand? Grand, no. No, nowhere near. I'm thinking sort of 400 quid. 400 quid? 400 quid. I couldn't get out of bed for 400 yeah, quid. Yeah, come on, you're already out of bed. <laughs> I'll have to think of it and see what else you spend. All right, OK. Yeah. But once again, he's dealing with a man who knows the value of what he's selling. He decides to leave the bench for now. Oh, I haven't seen that for ages. Little nursing chair. A pair of chairs like these are rare, and in their current state could bring around £380. Alex could probably sort that leg out, I suppose. They're fairly easy to get hold of, these singles, but a pair's interesting. Mm. It was a fair price. Then I might be more friendly on the bench. Mm. 200? Well, they're a pair, mate. That's 100 each. I've got, well, yeah, I've got to start somewhere. Each. Up a bit, up a freckle, up a freckle. Up a freckle. 250 for the pair. Not up a freckle. It's only 100 pounds. You can't get no, a that's, You that's cannot gonna, buy a. That's going to cost me 100 quid to sort that leg out, for sure. That's just woodworm holding hands, holding that together. Look. <laughs> yeah. Come on, I don't think so. What? I've gone. Two, 275 for the pair. Call it three. I can't pay three. Okay? No. Oh. oh, all right then. Two seven five. Even. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else you could find? Maybe. One of these. Well, there's a pair of these. Yeah, you got a pair. Yeah, there's a pair. Yeah. That makes them valuable. Yeah, look. Legs are different. The other way, Jules. No. No, they're different. The one closest to me was oak. Really well made. Very attractive. And no metal supports on it. What would I want to pay for that? 50. Is that all? Yeah. Sure? Sure. Are you absolutely positive? Absolutely positive. But what about the other? Could you the other want... one's no good. It's yeah. pine and it's been messed about with and it's a different size and it's nowhere near as good as that one. Really? So, no, that's just a... That one. It looks the same, but it really, really isn't. They're Could chalk and cheese. Come a little bit? Maybe a tenner. That would be it. Yeah. 60 quid? 60 quid. What about this, Ben? Saddle horse. Well, it's old. It's genuine. Yeah, it is. Sensing he's winning the battle, Drew quickly makes an offer on another Regency piece. Got the tack hangers on both ends. The saddle horse is great. It's in the condition I wish everything I found was in. Original paint in beautiful condition, great colour, size, everything going for it. Used to store and display saddles, this piece could easily fetch almost £500. Where do you want to start? Three or four hundred. Um, yeah, three I'm going to do. Three? Three I'll do. Sure? Yeah. Are sure. you positive? Positive. You didn't say four? No. No. Oh. All right, then. Lovely. <laughs> it seems like Drew has the upper hand, so he returns to the piece he really wants, the bench. What do you reckon, Ben, on this bench, then? 
Can we do? Can we do that? Four and a half? You said, did you say 475? Did I go up to 475? More no. than likely. Didn't I? No, you didn't. Didn't I? No, you didn't. Oh, OK. But you would do, wouldn't you? For a deal. Done. You did now. Lovely. Right, we'll have that. <laughs> done. I think we're done in here, then. Huh. Yeah. We're going to miss that stuff. Some of it has been around here for <laughs> centuries. <laughs> Anyway, look, Ben, I really enjoyed it today. Okay, thanks, thanks. very much. Thanks for coming. Thanks. I, I've got Good to night, come guys. up to Wales now and give you all the bloody money back. Come, come and on. see us. Come and yeah. see us. I've got lots of nice things you'd love for your house. Yeah. After making a great haul from a grand house and making a new friend, Drew and Julian arrive back at the base to unload and unveil the valuables. Waiting for them are Drew's wife, Rebecca, sales manager, Mark, and restorer, Gavin. This is one thing which should just... Saddle, Saddle horse. horse. Lovely bridal hooks on the end. They make They're it, don't really, they? Really, uh, I love the colour. Perfect. Mm. What do you need to do to it? Nothing really. This, which is just really cute, it's meant to look like bird's eye maple. Very naively oh. done. You're going to keep it like that, or? Yeah. Don't touch it. I like it. I think it's got a charm of its own. That's just quite sweet, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. That's a big fender. Big club fender, caked in pigeon poo. So Gavin, what? That needs. No, oh. no, no. Oh. <laughs> Look at that, guano. <laughs> That's guano. a lot of poo. Mm, you've probably got two days in this, Kevin. Just on the poo. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do with these is just going to trade them straight out. Yeah. Hall bench. Upholstered hall bench. Very nice. 1870s. That's stunning. It's great, Absolutely isn't it? Absolutely stunning. You like it? Yep. That's my favourite so far. Classic. Absolutely. And then the best bit. Look at wow. this. Wow. 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 How that's amazing. Look at that. Isn't it incredible? That's fantastic. That's unbelievable. That's the best thing you've bought back so far. And after a bit of detective work, the good news is that Drew's hunch about the fireplace was correct. On the rarity stake, it's right up there. There's probably not another one for sale in this country. I know what most guys have got for sale. I can't see one, haven't seen one. It's just beautiful. God, it's good. The next day, Drew and Julian are heading off on a five-hour drive to Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Today's destination is Julian's opportunity to combine business with pleasure. This is your call, this one. You've told me there's a guy down here who's got a tank, and you want to go and look at it. Look, no, you know, don't be scared of your sexuality. <laughs> Since I was 18, I've been interested in military vehicles. It's just brilliant. The noise, the smell, it's totally different to a normal car. We'll go and see this chap, but it's purely on the off chance he's going to have something of interest, right? Yeah. Haven't got all day to hang around with the guy and talk uh -huh. about tanks, even though you want to, and that's the yes. only real reason we're going. Oh, all right, so you don't need to humour me. Yeah, yeah. Me. This is to humour you. You've got half an hour with this chap, all right? Hopefully there'll be some stuff for Drew to buy, uh, which will make his day. Um, I'm sort of dragging him along. But, as I say, anything military, my sort of day out, and hopefully Drew will get a few bits and pieces while we're there. And if he says we're going, can we go in the tank, we're going to say no. Why? Because we can't, we're busy business, we can't go driving around in tanks. So this is it, yeah? Oh, yeah. Here we go. And there's a tank. I told you it was a tank. Are you Sean? I am, yes. Hi, uh, we've um, a friend of mine called Julian. I'm called Drew. Hi, Hi, Hi Drew. How are you doing? Hi, Julian. We've, um, okay. We're in the area and we've, we've, um, we've heard you've got tanks. I thought any guy who collects tanks must yeah. have something else of interest, so... Yeah. We're in the area, yeah. we thought we'd yeah. call in. Yeah, why not? We're looking for sort of odd and unusual items. Engines? No. No? Not engines. No. An ejector seat over the back? Oh, I've got... is it um, an alloy sort of... Um, yeah, yeah, alloy frame. Yeah. yeah. At the mention of the ejector seat, Drew suddenly become more interested. Them. They're popular as video gaming seats or with interior designers. The uh, seat itself is a Martin Baker ejector seat. Came out of a jet, um, a Hunter Hawker. There's something about it which is unique. Have you got padded seats or anything for no, it? No, I haven't. That's just not, it, is it? So it's just one, a yeah. shell. Yes. It's just a shell of a yes, seat and a frame. Yeah. Examples like this can sell for around £450. So you pull that. Well, nothing, nothing's going to happen, obviously, if I... No, 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 not at all. No. No. Is it gone off? Has it sort of been 
released? Is it full of pressure or something? Um, and how does, well, how does all, it, how do all, it work? They're all taken away anyway. Um, all that's yeah, gone, is it? Yeah, off the, it? yeah the explosive uh, ram. It's like a sort of hot rod, bucket, racing car, spaceship type of fighter yeah. aircraft thing, yeah. isn't it? The other one I have is in um, actually a lot better. You've got another one? Yes. Two ejector seats? Yes. Just in case. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> his, his and hers, you see? <laughs> in the convertible. Oh, right, nice. Yeah. yeah. As, as if she gives you all this, you know. Yeah. So, Goodbye. <laughs> Bye -bye. Yeah, you just really talk too much. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah they do that. So, not married? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hence, the ejector seat is one of the most expensive parts of the aircraft. Is it? Yes. So, how much would something like this cost then? To... Thousands. Thousands. Possibly hundreds of hundreds. thousands? Possibly hundreds yeah, yeah. of thousands, yeah. yeah. What can we do on this as it stands? I couldn't honestly tell you. Um, really? Um... Ballpark. Ballpark, just imagine about three, four hundred pounds, I'd think. There's not something what you see every day. No. No. <laughs> don't don't, don't, don't come across true. ejector seats. You haven't. Often. No. <laughs> no, no, not common. I don't know. I don't see it at 300 quid. It's the sort of thing I like. Yeah. I've never bought an ejector seat before, but yeah. um, have I? No. No. I think I'd pay 150 quid for it. I wouldn't pay any more. Do you want to think about it? Yeah, of course. Because I know. He really wants to go and look at your tank. Which one? Which one? I can say that. Sabre. The Sabre. It's a real tank. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a that's real a, proper... that's a, a light tank, they call them. Do you drive it on the road? Yes, road legal. Normal road tax. Insurance is cheap. To buy something like this is around about 25,000. Drew may not be in the market for a tank, but military enthusiast Julian has definitely given it some thought. Can't afford one, but I'd have one. Got to be honest. When you actually fire one of these up, and then go for a spin, um, um, the adrenaline is just un unreal. So does it go? It does. Yes, it does. Would you like uh, a ride out? And if he says we're going, can we go in the tank, we're going to say no. Oh, never thought you'd ask, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to have a crash, are we? No, not at all. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I got a fire up. Oh, cool. You don't worry about the bars gallon when you've got something like this. You really don't. Go right. Right, Chuck. <laughs> Everybody, out of your houses! <laughs> Hello, dear. I've, um, I've been out today. I've bought something rather unusual. <laughs> <laughs> what a laugh. <sighs> so much fun. <laughs> it's just so much fun. 25 grand for a tank, 50 grand for a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> now the ice is well and truly broken with Sean, Drew takes his opportunity <laughs> to resume negotiations over the ejector seat. Is the ejector seat any chance of a buy on that, or yes or no? Yes, you could. Yeah? Yes. £150? <laughs> go on, then. Yeah, yeah, great. Lovely, we'll take yeah. that as well. Got to go in a tank and an ejector seat. There you go, but nobody else has done that today. How are we going to explain this one? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's up there on the list of strange things I've bought. It's, it's getting up there. It's top ten. I think we should see no. if there's any mice in the top of this. What it's is a boy's it? boy's nest. That's not, that's not. No, it's a robin's. Nest. Oh, is it? Yes. He's a brave man. Oh! <laughs> Over to you. Thanks yeah, for that. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> See you. <laughs> He's a nice bloke. He's just you love him, unusual you? taste. Julian and Sean definitely bonded over their love of all things military, and Drew can't resist teasing. You can stand around it all day in fatigues, looking at each other's tanks. <laughs> back home, and the team are used to unusual things coming out of the back of the van, but even they are floored by this one. We went to a guy who uh, collects tanks and military vehicles, and uh, we drove around his village at a tank. <laughs> Terrifying. I just laughed for ten minutes solid. It was brilliant. <laughs> And I was sat up in the top and I had the helmet on with the big ear things and my shades. It was brilliant. <laughs> but we bought this off him, which is really cool. It's an ejector seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's all alloy. 
and it's just got such a fantastic look to it. It's got the thing out the top here where the, where the parachute would come out. That's where the explosive would have gone. It can make it work. No, it won't work. <laughs> Sincerely hope it doesn't work. No, you can't make it work because you'd be shooting people 150 <laughs> foot into the air. That's a great idea. Yeah. 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 You were the yeah, you were top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not sure whether to strip it and polish it, because no, the uh, but it might take Gav a week to strip and polish it, that's the problem. You'd um, love that. Uh, so you don't know how much restoration you're going to do? No. The look on Gavin's face when I said I wanted to strip and polish it was like, oh my god. But it depends if he's if he if he gets on my nerves, I'm gonna make get it polished. <laughs> it's nice to see Drew back. Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? While Drew decides what to do with his ejector seat, the decision to restore the couch from Mansell House has already been made. Usually we would sell furniture on straight away, but that I think is worth having it professionally reupholstered. Very saleable. Upholsterer Craig Hughes is based a few miles away in Colwyn Bay. He's been restoring furniture for Drew for many years and knows exactly what he likes. When we strip this out, you've got 100 years of muck and dirt in it. And it all blows around. It goes up your nose. It's absolutely filthy. It's cost around £400 to restore, but Rebecca's instincts have paid off. Perfect. The worn-out couch is now a stunning piece of furniture that Drew knows will sell easily. We've done it in just a natural calico, so this can easily be taken off and reupholstered in, you know, somebody's choice of fabric over the top of this, and now it's ready for sale. It's almost a blank canvas now. The last visit was a rare treat for Julian, but today it's definitely one for Drew. It's a 300-mile trip to Aylesbury, where he's meeting a true car enthusiast with some genuine pieces of automotive history. We've been called down to a farm by a guy called Neil Tuckett, who runs Tuckett Brothers, which is a Model T Ford restoration and repair and sales specialist. This guy's like the leading authority in the country. I keep a few Model Ts back for myself. They're my own personal ones. But otherwise, everything else is here. It's for sale. And uh, I'm always glad to see another one go out of the yard because, at the end of the day, it's another Model T that's going on the road. But restorer Gavin, who's accompanying Drew today, is not so thrilled. I'm sick of bloody Model T Fords. I try and paint some interest in Model T Fords. I'm not as much of a car nut as Drew, so um, I'd rather be back at the shop. I don't have a problem. You're the one with the car aversion. Of, you need car aversion therapy. Oh, I can hear the whiz of a grinder. That's got to be the place. Oh, I like the look of this place already. Oh, Drew, hi. Yeah, nice to meet you. Well, where would you like to start? Just... Do you want to have a look round? Please, yeah, can yeah, I just, fine. just have a look at through everything, please? You can, no problem. I love that one over there. I've never had a, a Model T Ford. I've had hundreds of classic cars, That's literally. That's a chance. That's I've a never... chance. <laughs> Neil shows Drew an original, unrestored Model T Ford, but it's not for sale. But this is the car I take home. Okay. I just love this one. Pretty this well, pretty original car. Even the upholstery is pretty original. And I've been offered quite a lot of money for this car, but that's my car, and I enjoy it. Look at him go. Yay. Gavin has been looking elsewhere and thinks he's found something for Drew to buy that doesn't have four wheels. Drew? Yes, mate. There's green lamps up here. Oh, yeah, there's some green enamel lamps up there. Yeah. Uh, can I have a dig up there, Gav, see if you can yeah. get them? Watch yourself, mate. Yeah. All the, you know, the modern aluminium ones. Yeah. Yeah, Coolicon. Yeah. Suck together. Popular in the trendy restaurant and lounge market, Coolicon shades can fetch as much as £45 each. Excellent. How much are these, Neil, each? Yeah, Good, yeah. bad and ugly, I'll take what, a lot. What do you think they're worth? Um, well, I, I want to buy them for as little as I possibly can. So, what, how much a pop? Oh, they're worth a five rupee, aren't they? Five for a piece is fine, I was going to say that too. The true meaning of ferreting. We've got Gavin on one side and Drew the other. All good farmers. 
arsenic poison. What I like about it is the poison, it's not just painted on, that's actually embossed in, uh, into the front surface of it. So it's always, yes, 50s, and it's always been for poison. And it's a cool colour, you know, it's just a nice little thing. And uh, I like the fact it's non-returnable. <laughs> Original 1950s canisters like these are popular with collectors, designers, and film and TV prop agencies. This one could go for around 65 pounds. Poison tub, how much is he? Are you going to draw for on that? What are we going to pay for that, 20 quid? That's going to be the max, I can't go any more for that one. I'd actually got a 25 in mind on that one, actually, because I thought that was a decent, a decent tub. Go for 25, because you've got to fly the these. OK, we'll have a deal at £25, that's fine. Yeah, we'll have those. I did, I did get off lightly on the lights. We're going to find another shed, then. Yeah, let's we? go and find some more stuff. Right, Drew, so here, Drew, we've got some real agricultural salvage, which... Well, we'll have a look. May or may not excite you. Maybe, you never know. Quite like these big old troughs. Yeah, some of the old riveted ones are quite pleasant, yeah, now, aren't they? Yeah, I quite like those. You know, they're quite interesting. Just pull that one down, Gavin, and just have a quick look at it. Are these, are these for sale, are you using these? No, I'd sell them, you know, they're basically... Gardening ornaments, aren't they? Yeah. That's what well, I, what I like about them is the rivets yeah. and the, just the sheer size yeah. of them. They've definitely got something about them. Cleaned and converted into garden planters, these early 20th century feed troughs could easily sell for £200 each. What, what, what sort of money are we looking at for these? Oh, give me an offer on those. Probably more than scrap value. They're worth more than scrap value. So what, what do you reckon? £50? Yeah, I'd take £50 each for those. Yeah. OK. That's a good one, yeah, I like this one. They'll end up as a nice pair of planters. Yeah. A few more agricultural bits in here. Oh, goody. All been tidied up. Well, it's all disappeared over the years. Yeah. Been scrapped, but a few things here I don't like throwing away. Sorry, Neil, I couldn't help myself going in here, Neil. What have you found in there? That beautiful speedster. That's the Golden Ford. Do you want to look in there while you... Yes, please. I've read about this car. All oh, right. This is a car, Neil, that, on a personal level, I really, really want to see. Wait till you see this. 1911 Model T Ford. Wow. If you don't like cars, after seeing this, you're a soulless, heartless person. Reputedly, it's the only brass-bodied car in the world. As you can see, it's in its winter condition, all greased up. Yeah, you can feel the grease yeah, over yes. everything. Yeah, yeah. The Golden Ford is actually made of solid brass and is unique. Neil has owned it since the 1980s. It's a real piece of automotive history, as it won the 1912 All Ford Race at Brooklands, the historic racetrack based in Weybridge in Surrey, now the site of an auto museum and venue for vintage car racing. Whoa, look at that. So basically a Model T engine, overhead valve conversion. I bought it out of a cellar up in Shropshire. An old boy had got Model T's and bits and pieces, and he said to me, well, there's something in the cellar. I know it's interesting, but I don't know what it is. This is Neil's pride and joy, and is difficult to value, but he's already turned down many offers for this car. Almost time to leave, but not before an automotive trip back in time. Do you want to learn uh, how to drive a Model T? I'd love to. Who's going in the back? I'll go in the back. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Ooh. That's the advanced retard. Yep. Set that up. Okay. Throttle down. Yep. Handbrake back. Yep. Switch on. That's yep. a coil buzzing. Yep. And then we have to wind it. Choke. <laughs> okay. Okay. Handbrake halfway forward. That's the first key thing. Right, when you're ready, handbrake forward. Reduce your revs and take the foot off. How's it feel? Fantastic. <laughs> the first production Model T Ford was built in 1908 and sold for $825, the equivalent to $15,000, or around £9,000 today. It was the first car within the reach of America's middle class due to the innovation of the assembly line and interchangeable parts. At the height of its success, it took as little as 93 minutes to build a complete car. And we're done. That's it. 
You're a Model T driver. That's fantastic. I've enjoyed that so Gavin's much. Gavin's bright and stiff. Look at him. He's gone bright red. It must be the sunshine. <laughs> Gavin has been huffing and puffing and whinging all day about not wanting to go and play with the Model T Fords, but I knew the second we got him behind the wheel, he'd just love it. Really what we've got is... Thank you very much. That's all right. That's most enjoyable. Thank you. <laughs> I want one now. Yeah. Quite an experience. Never driven one of those before. So uh, a really good end to a quite a boring day. What's your poison? Okay. Well, I've got a little present for you anyway. Oh. You know you hit that gatepost on the way round. <laughs> well, there's the hubcap. You can keep it as a souvenir. That's brilliant. It's an English one. Yeah, was it? Well, I haven't got USA on, you see. English ones. That won't be sold. That's brilliant. Thanks a lot, Neil. Cheers. It's been a pleasure. I think today was... It was more fun than work, wasn't it? After a small but successful haul, and with Gavin finally converted into a classic car lover, Drew and Gavin head back to the shop to drop off the items. Big pile of those. Mark, Loads. little ones. That's Lovely, yeah. just little what ones we need. Difficult to sell. No. Well, no. Thank you, Wally. But it, then I don't want to do too much to them. It'll take all the charm of them away if we do too much work. Yeah, I don't want them to look new. I want them to look they're 100 years old. I don't want them to look pristine. They are good, old-fashioned, heavy engineering trough. That's its charm. Why ruin it? Right, sit there. That's it. The items are prepared and photographed to go online, with a little help from Enzo. Good lad. Keep him, keep him with the jerky. Sure keep the jerky. He's such a poser. So He's such a poser. Good lad. Come on in. Out. Out you come. Good lad. Oh, come on. Oi. Can you have a piece now? I haven't got any. I'll put it back in the jar. Oh, that's <laughs> rotten. Go and give him a piece. Come on, mate. Slightly. Which one do you reckon? He's starting to pose now. He is, isn't he? Love me. Love me. Love the camera. Oh, look at his face. Hey? Enzo is the... <laughs> he is my most valued employee. He's the one I get the least grief from. There's only one thing that gets Drew more excited than a trip to a car enthusiast, and that's a trip to a scrapyard. Today, Drew and Julian are on their way to a legendary yard in Bista. But first, they need to catch up on the pressing issues of the day. So what was it? Music for breakfast again? No, I had cornflakes, oh. yoghurt, oh. apple juice and a cup of tea. Because oh. yesterday, I went for a curry and loads of lager. <laughs> so after now, my yin and my yang need to be... Uh, I need to ying my yang, basically, and sort okay. myself out. We're going to a guy called Tony. He's got a scrapyard called Elsie Hughes in Bicester. My name's Tony, and um, I came up here when, we was, uh, when I was a boy, of about four years old. The main fund producer would be buying and selling scrap. That's what we do. We process it a little bit, grade it, and then it gets uh, sent out on lorries. I don't want to do scrap. I need to find something beautiful amongst the scrap. I think this looks like the place. Office? Yeah. Okay. Tony. Hiya. Hello. Hi. Um, Drew. Hello, how you doing? Hi. This is Jules. Hi. Hiya. Really? How you doing? Hi. I see you do a bit of reclaiming. That's right, yeah, we do that. How big's the site? It's about 10 acres, roughly. Drew is living proof that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And even after 20 years, he's excited about what lies ahead in an undiscovered scrapyard. These are brilliant, these big crucibles, aren't they? they where, are, do you, yeah. where do you get these yeah. from? We often do factory clearances. These must have been part of them. House clearing stuff, skips, all manner of things. You just don't know what you're going to find. In the corner, I can see three large cast iron floor grills. These look like Victorian church floor grills from the last part of the 19th century. They're not new, that's for sure. And they've got this quatrefoil detail on here, which is like four petals like that, usually seen in church windows. Victorian cast iron grates like these are easy for Drew to sell and can fetch around £60 each. Can we pull these out, Jules? Just see what's. Yep. Make sure they're all, all all right. Yeah, that's all right. They're okay, aren't they? 
What do you reckon? The, the other two okay? Yeah, these two. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, they look all right. How much for these grills, Tony? Uh, 20 quid a piece, something like that. Then it's an item with, you know, interesting shape, and so, you know, that's how I price things. 60 quid? For three? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sixty pound. Yep. Yeah. Well, straight away I've managed to find a you know a period piece of architectural salvage. Perfect. So there's more in here. Yep. Go into the shed and there's a, another strange mix again: wheelchairs and kettles and all manner of thing in in there. But on the floor there was these three or four pieces of timber, a couple of them carved, and the carving just looked a bit different. Are they oak, are they? Yeah. Is it light oak, is it? Really Literally. They're just very dry. These lines here, that's not machine done. It's just, it's off, it's clearly hand done. Yeah. Carved pieces of architectural salvage like these are popular in restoration or just as decorative items. Drew could probably get around £200 for this unusual pair. Do you just found them in a skip? They've been hanging around for quite a few years. Mm. It just seemed a shame just to burn them, you know? Yeah, they're too good for that, aren't they? Up a bit, up a bit, mate. Next one. There we go. And it's that way round. Yep. Oh, wow. Lots of uses these could have had. They could have been from the gable of a, of a building. But again, very unusual. What would you want for these, Tony? I thought you said £50 for the lot. What do you reckon? They're good and they're interesting, but there's not an awful lot you can do with them, so they're... No. Gonna... If he thinks they got potential... Yeah, well, I'll give you on that. That's fine. OK. I'll take it's... a chance on 50 quid. Yep, OK. Cool, lovely. Thank you. OK, that's all right. Nice no worries. I think I've possibly got an absolute bargain, or I've just bought some nice bits of timber for £50. I need to sort of sit down and go over them and just live with them for a little bit and get my head around what they are. Underneath a pile of stuff in the distance, I saw just the end of a cast iron column coming out, so you can see the square plate with the four holes in it, and then the, the top of the cast iron column. Some are Victorian, aren't they? Out of a... Yeah, they're Victorian, yeah. They're only very, very short, uh, yeah. so they're probably on a brick stanchion. But I'm hoping there's a couple of pairs. They slightly narrow towards the top. You've got two pairs there, you know. I hope so, but one's broken. They always yeah. crack around the base here. Just checking they're the same height. Don't want to buy mismatched stuff. They're period and they're attractive and they're useful. They're not the most exciting thing that we buy, but we always no. buy these no. regularly, because whenever we get them, they sell straight away. Always popular in the home restoration market, a pair of these columns can bring in almost £300. These two taper from the base to the top, which is very attractive. Yeah. It's a shame, bloody shame that's broken. It is. What do you want for them? £50 each? No, too much. Too much? Yeah. What would you want to pay them? Um, I'd probably be, because of the break, I'd probably be trying to get away with 100 for the four. No, but I don't think you could get, I don't think they'll, we'll let them go for that. I think they're worth a little bit more. Do you want to meet in the middle again? So I said 50 a piece, which was, which was 200. You wanted to say 100. 100. So we say 150 then um, for the four. I'm giving myself a bit of a headache because when I come to sell it, I've got to explain to people, say, well, yeah, they are a bit broken, but they're still usable. Yeah, go on, we'll take them. So 150 yeah. for the four. 150 for the four. Okay, okay that's great. Okay, Wherever he goes, Drew is always looking for the one piece that will make the trip worth his while. This is where I've spent most of my childhood roaming around places like this. Oh yeah. And he's just spotted it. I like that pot. Do you? Yeah. It's got everything I'm looking for. And it seems obvious to me. It sort of jumps out at me. It's like as if it's got a flag waving at me. It's like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. It's definitely got a bit of... Um, it's it's a, a very visual piece, isn't it, if you had that in your it garden? Is. Yeah, I think so. That's what I'm looking at it for. Cast iron cauldrons like these are coveted as garden planters and often command around £1,000 each. What do you want for it? Ah, oh, very good question. Mm, 400 Four. Yeah. Too much for you? Yeah. What would you want to pay, then? Um, when I saw it, I came with a figure in my head straight away, which is what I'd be happy to pay, which was yeah. £200. Pound. £200. Pound. Yeah. I know that someone will come and they'll look at this and they might pay more. Maybe. Well, that's you know, the chance. Depends I'm... on the customer. That's the chance I'm going to take with it. Tell you what, look, can we tip it out? Can we tip it over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heavy. Oh. OK. It's just starting to go on the seam there, isn't it? I'll have to tidy that up. Do you want to meet halfway then? Tell you what, 375 then. 350? Yeah, 350 would be okay. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Lovely. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Fab. 
Right, there you go, Jules. You've got to get that on the van. Oh, I'll just drag it around then, Yeah. I don't want the normal stuff. I want the strange stuff. For me, it holds the most interest, and certainly, that's got it all. One, two... All right, watch yourself. Why is all the best stuff always heavy? There you go. Cheers, Danny. Thank you, mate. There you go. Where do you want to put him? Okay, we'll do that. I came to a scrapyard and bought some scrap. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we okay. do. Tony, Bye. thank you, mate. What have you bought today? Quarter of a ton pot. <laughs> yeah, big pot. Massive big pot. pot. The van is full, but it's the reaction of the team back home that really matters to Drew. <laughs> what is it? It's an unexploded World War II bomb. No, no it's a great big... It's, it's a, a big... big uh... down. It's a fantastic shape. And what are your plans with it? I want to put it in the middle of the shop. It's not as bad as it looks. It looks like it weighs a ton. One, two... <laughs> Gently. Right. OK. When you see it stood up, it looks a million dollars. See the rivets on both, both sides. Gav, just take this off. Stiff brush, take that off. Anything loose out of the inside. And while we've got it here, drill a hole in it. In fact, drill two holes in it, please, just for Stay drainage. Level. OK, we've got loads more to unload. There you go, they came from the same place. Okay. Yeah? Seems to be collecting these at the moment. We've got God knows how many of them. The cast columns, very interesting to see two pairs. Um, they can be mounted on big stone blocks, make a lovely veranda. They're nice, aren't they? Yep. Decent size, no breaks, no cracks. There's only three, though which is a bit disappointing. But not all purchases are met with enthusiasm from the team. And there's a pair. Right, they're both pretty badly damaged. Do you know what I think we're going to make out of them? Console tables. You know, against the wall. You know, you put them against the wall there. Get rid of that. Do you like them? Well, you're going to have to spend quite a bit and do something with them. Yeah, I think everybody was like, oh, uh, why have you bought those? Maybe I sort of see something in them that nobody else does. Maybe, I don't know. But... They're certainly different. Up, that way. Oh, no, try that. No. Yeah, oh, that's, that's it. Can't see it selling today. Who knows? But I think it'll probably take some time. It's going to have to be a garden designer or somebody who really understands and knows the best use for something like that. What you don't want to do is take too much off of it, but leave enough on so that it looks aged. After a quick clean and a few snaps, the items are online and ready for sale, less than 24 hours after they were picked up at the scrapyard. These are great. At the end of the week, a new friend takes up Drew's invitation to drop by the shop. Although Sir Ben seemed desperate for cash just recently, he's now looking to wheel and deal, and Drew hopes he has just the item for him. Sir Ben. Hello. How are you doing? Good to see you. Michelle. Hiya. Hi, Hiya. how are you? Sometimes the people I buy from become customers. In fact, it's quite common. Um, I knew if I could get Sir Ben down into the shop, he definitely could be interested in that big pot. It's close to the door because we didn't want to move it too far. Mm. What do you think? It's bigger than I thought it was. Mm. It's probably heavier than I thought it was. Yep. Uh, but you're getting more for your money. So what do you reckon? So I'm asking 900 quid. I'm asking a bit more, but to you, it's 900 to start off. Well, there's a lot of diesel. It's a lot of diesel, yeah. So, should we say five? No, can't do five. What can you do? Best um, price. 700 quid, and that's it. That is it. We're not doing any more. <laughs> the wad comes out, no. <laughs> 700. Thank you. There you go. Once again, the eccentric, aristocratic exterior belies a shrewd businessman. Sir Ben has managed to get the pot for £200 less than the ticketed price, but Drew's happy with the deal. Seeing Sir Ben and Michelle was great. It was really nice to have them in the shop. Taking those things from 
one place from out of context, something completely odd, and selling it to a new grand house in a wonderful setting like that. It's what I do, and it's what I have the most fun doing. Always a pleasure to meet you, and I'll see you next week. Michelle, Thank good you. to see you again. And you. Drive on, driver. From the couch, from Sir Ben's, right through to the columns, to the ejector seats, to, to the lamps, to all these other little things we buy. And they do have a new life, and that's what the most important thing is, for to make these things do something else and look good again. And we made a few quid too.